Yes. Okay, great. All right. Welcome everybody to our regular city commission meeting. Um, I just have a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, first, we want to wish Jennifer a happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> and we'll be celebrating after the meeting, if you care to join us. 29 again. Yeah. yeah. I heard there was going to be a boat launch, too, in her honor on Sunday. That's her happy birthday, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, uh, we're going to change some things around here this morning or this evening. Um, after our invocation and pledge, we're going to do the the proclamation for the 100 year anniversary. I'm sorry, we're gonna do uh, citizen input first, then we're gonna do the proclamation for the church, and then we're gonna do the historical um, plaque and designation for the church. That way, and then we're gonna go into the GDP. So that way, if you all wanna hightail it out of here, you don't have to wait. Um, and then we'll go back to regular order, but also we have three um, informational items at the end of the meeting. Um, I, I know I sent you an email about a letter of support for the uh, for the uh, Ready for 100 at Pinellas County, and then two items. Jennifer, you got two. Yes. Which which two is it you wanted? You don't have to say. I mean, just say what they are so right. people know that they're coming. Uh, an update on the uh, overlay district yep. for the south side of town, and also a, a Florida League of Cities um, issue. Okay. So that'll be at the end. So just letting everybody know the. <clears throat> how everything is moving around. So first we'll do the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everyone would please rise. As we begin this meeting, let us all take a moment to reflect together, each according to our own individual beliefs and intentions. And as we approach our nation's recognition of Veterans Day next week, May we remember the bravery and sacrifices of those serving our country at home and abroad. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to your republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Do we have anybody else on Zoom tonight? Not for this meeting, Mayor, no. All right, can we shut it down? Um, I, think, I yes. think they will be remaining on because you have a corresponding financing piece that's the oh. approval of the resolution on your oh, agenda. Oh, that's right. The I was just note. trying to get that computer out of my way. Okay. I understand. Well, we'll, we'll alert you when it comes to that item, Mayor, but not until that agenda item. Gotcha. All right, so first we're going to do citizen input, and this is input by anyone on any item that's not already <laughs> on the agenda. At that time, you'll be able to speak. Come on down. Give us your name and address, and you get three minutes. Vinnie Luisi, Director of Dunedin History Museum. Uh, I have two things. First of all, happy birthday. And second, <laughs> thank you for being a judge at one of the children's Halloween uh, parade. You did an excellent fun. job. The only thing I have to remind you is don't point to people next mm -hmm. year oh, on okay. that. They think they <laughs> win on that. They were all so cute. I couldn't. Yes, <laughs> uh, second, I just, would, on a sadder note, two days ago, a, a well-respected member of our community passed away, Melba Rylott. Uh, of congested heart failure, and I've known Melba almost 30 years, and I think as many people have known her even longer than that. And Melba has been uh, very uh, contributed to this community in so many ways and so many organizations, uh, through Rotary, through the DCO, through Inner Wheel. It just goes on and on. And uh, we will be through the Dunedin Museum, who she was very uh, uh, good to in many, many ways. She presented us with the statues in front of the museum. And there'll be a honor in her mention at the chapel probably early December. So I just wanted to let everybody know. But she will be missed, and she was a friend to everybody. So thank you. Thank you, Vinny. Anyone else? Was Come on down, Matt. Name and address for the record. Matt Stevens, 1250 Palm Boulevard. <clears throat> Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Madam Mayor, Commission, um, I'm here on behalf of Fairway Estates. Uh, I'm president of the association, and they are asking if we can take a look at um, uh, traffic situations that are in the community. 
Um, in our community for Fairway, we've got about 500 plus houses. <clears throat> Many of you have been there, I'm sure. Um, we've got uh, a microcosm of Dunedin in that we've got uh, elderly people, <clears throat> excuse me, walking with walkers. Um, we've got a lot of young people still learning how to ride their bikes. Uh, the neighborhood, basically a very vibrant, active neighborhood. Um, we've got some people with wheelchairs uh, that are out there. Um, dog walkers, obviously it is Dunedin. Um, and basically social gathering. What we have been working on as far as uh, the board on behalf of our community is trying to get our hands around traffic situations that are in the community. Um, we've got situations of speeding, uh, drifters, uh, racing, um, cut-throughs, because we're kind of a shortcut between some places, um, and also damage to one of the oldest trees that we've got in the, uh, I believe, in the county uh, on demerit. <clears throat> We've worked with the Sheriff's Department for a couple of years as far as identifying uh, situations, incidences, as far as giving them data, statistics, and things along those lines. We've tried to do vi uh, videos, social media, um, the warning signs, even the blinking signs over the past few years with very little results. Um, the concern is that we're going to continue to have these instances of property damage, which you'll hear here in a minute. Uh, of some people that have had property damage um, or potentially fatalities. With all of those people that are out active, um, it is by the grace of God that we have not had something like that. So what we're asking is if there could, the, the association along with the entire community is willing, ready, and able to try to engage to figure out is there anything that we can do to help identify and potentially limit the risks uh, no one specific identifiable source, just going, can we assess the situation before potentially there is a fatality and try to minimize the property damages that have been happening. Um, some of the specific streets that we've been identifying, just for the record, Fairway, Palm, Sarazen, and obviously Demerit with the tree. Uh, if you drive by the tree, you'll see how scarred it has been with, because it's a 12 foot high with a sign, how many trucks use that as a cut through damaging that tree. So. Um, I appreciate your time, uh, and I look for, we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And I, and I know you're going to come up, but I just wanted to tell you what I what I told Matt prior to the meeting. Our our team has been uh, working with a number of people in the neighborhood and had directed sheriff patrols and all of that stuff, and we know that a lot of that it deters for a period of time. You know, really, and especially Palm Boulevard is a complicated. Uh, traffic planning kind of thing and so I explained to Matt that we have a traffic planner at some point coming on board and a part of that person's duty is going to be looking at neighborhood traffic programs and and being able to study and analyze those things um, so I don't know if you have an update as to where we are in that process of hiring somebody. We are actively advertising for that commission. It's on our website. And then we also send uh, the job description to, to um, any of the disciplines that, that would provide for transportation planners. So, uh, and George is here. And that position will be answering to George, our director of community development. So we're recruiting, we're recruiting as quickly as possible. All right. OK. Come on down. Give us your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Alan Gustafson, Demerit Drive, uh, Dunedin. And <clears throat> I've been a resident there for, well, we bought the property about six years ago, full-time resident for the last four years. And I have witnessed the traffic issues and they've seemed to have gotten worse. Um, and just to enhance upon what Matt has just stated, three weeks ago, my wife and I were in our kitchen. Uh, we live at the very end of Palm Going, going up there, there's where the stop sign is. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> there was a tremendous screeching of tires, um, smoke. We ran outside. There was a car that had gone uh, through the area. It hit the stop sign on the pole, tore the pole down, went across my driveway, across my lawn, and stopped approximately two feet from head on into my house. Um, the car was uh, operated by high school students. Um, it was a race that, that was taking place between that and another carload of students. Um, and, and 
it was a situation where what happened, somebody could easily have gotten killed if they'd hit the big tree we have in front of our house, it would have been a serious damage to them. And, and as was just said, this street has people walking on it all the time, dogs, there are no sidewalks in the area. Um, and older people, we have grandchildren that play in their driveway. This is an extremely dangerous situation, it's getting worse. We talked to a couple of our neighbors and they said, this has been going on for a while. One of our neighbors uh, living next door before we moved in uh, had a car go through her garage. Um, there, was a, there was another neighbor that had damage to her property over a period of time. And when I talked to the sheriff's department about what's going on with the driver of the two cars, you have a 17 year old driving the one car and she was giving a ticket for careless operation, maximum, maximum is a fine of $500, period. No license suspension, nothing. And the other car, nothing happens. There was, a, there was somebody on the porch of his house seeing the cars racing up the street, ripped out his phone and got a video of this. The sheriff's department went look at the video. They said, we can't use that unless we are there personally and observe it or unless somebody is seriously injured or killed, okay? So, and we have that situation, if there'd been anybody walking down that street, there would have been somebody seriously injured or killed. This is a terrible, um, dangerous situation. We're gonna have those kids, and there were kids, there were probably a dozen kids in total in the two cars. There was 125 feet of skid marks going from the street through the stop sign and stopping two feet from our house. Uh, uh, and these kids are gonna go back and they're gonna talk to the other people in their class in the high school and basically say, hey, it was, it was quite an event and nothing happened to us. And this is getting worse and worse and somebody is gonna die or get seriously injured unless something happens. So as Matt was saying, we'd like to have somebody uh, uh, get involved in this and take a look at a serious situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I know that we can at least be talking with the sheriff's department. Um, it's not just about directed patrol in one area. It's about being in that neighborhood on a regular basis. Um, because he's right, if the kids talk, they're just going to do it more. So, um, and that could be at least an interim step until we get our traffic person on board and be able to look at it holistically. I will say that we have, over the years, tried to add sidewalks in Fairway and people don't want them. So I will say that. I just want you to know that we have offered and offered and offered to do that. Um, and it's very expensive, as you can imagine, but people want to be out in the road. So. Um, but maybe we can continue to look at that. I know we're going to be doing that sewer lining and or the water pipe thing on armor and the other one, mm -hmm. and then they're going to do the road work. The storm water pipe. Yeah, yeah, and so maybe that maybe at least that's a time. It's not where you're talking about, but maybe that would be the time to ask them if they want to have sidewalks. Mm -hmm. You know, since you're going to be working there anyway. Right. You know, but you know, maybe those at those intervals we can just keep asking. Um, but Jennifer, you'll look at this and get back with us and certainly get back to Matt as the HOA. I will, Mayor, yes. Person. Okay. Can, can I just ask, is there any vestige of the, um, the neighborhood watch left? No. Because, you know, that was a really strong program at one time. I mean, people really watched after each other. They really watched what was happening in their neighborhoods. And I, I know we're looking at this new position. That position should work just in step with the sheriff's department. I mean, mm -hmm. but that neighborhood watch was really strong. Mo, I know you are, you'll remember, or many of you remember that, and it was. I asked the sheriff about it um, maybe two or three weeks ago. I saw him somewhere, and uh, he said he can't get anybody to participate, so they just don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. It is tough. I know when we tried to up it, re-up it, like, I don't know, probably 15 years ago, yeah. even in my neighborhood, you, you just, I mean, you know, not saying anything because I had new neighbors now, but at that time, it was like people just didn't want to do it. And so it was tough. 
Well, since we're giving input to that, that's um, that's probably not going to not that's not the issue here. No, this it's not. It's not going to help. Anything, but but I am the chairman of the neighborhood watch, and we have an active chairman. We have an active neighborhood watch, and the sheriff will come at any given point in time and make any presentations that we want. So, um, neighborhood but watch is in, is in on existence the neighborhood wherever wherever it you know that it wants. Perhaps you have it, Matt. I'm, I I don't know. We have brought this up many times over the past few years as you, far as... you got to come to the microphone. <clears throat> but we have brought that up as far as the board to look at that, to act the active participation as far as the block captains and the overall neighborhood watch to help mitigate and help security across the board. Um, it's a slow process as far as getting active involvement. So, But we continue to look at that as well. Okay, so you'll you'll report back. I will, Mayor. Okay, and Jennifer will get back with you, Matt, <clears throat> to see whatever interim steps that there are. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> uh, my name is Eric Davis. My wife, Chantilla Davis. I own Eli's Barbecue, and she's is the president of A Mother's Arms. And our complaint today is my restaurant sits right there on Skinner Boulevard in the Pinellas County Trail. Well, the same complaint these gentlemen have, we have. Because I don't seen so many accidents right there on Skinner, even with the flashing lights, the cars look at the traffic light, not the flashing light. And they're racing to get yeah. to that light to make a turn and go wherever they're going. And sometimes the, the cyclists or the walkers, they don't, sometimes they may not stop all the time because the light automatically comes on and they feel like, okay, if the light's on, traffic gonna stop. Well, that's, that's troublesome because the simple fact of, I almost seen a child, a baby, a mother was running, jogging, she stopped pushed the button and got ready to go out and the car was inches from killing this child. And she's in, a, 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 I guess it's a jogger stroller. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't fathom to see that. I seen a lady get drugged under a car and her bicycle at least 20 yards. Yes, and and I don't know how many countless times I have seen this over and over and over. And me going, or my wife going out, giving water or assisting or calling 911. To be honest with you, I know it, it, that area needs to be worked on. I wish it was an overpath where the, the cyclists or the walkers can go above and not have to ever worry about it anymore. I know when the sheriff had a decoy car out there, in the middle of the intersection. It slowed it down, and it did. And I'm asking for it to come back, you know, because really, honestly, they pay attention to that. They see a sheriff patrol car there, they'll break down a little bit. But I promise you, somebody's gonna get hurt, and I just don't want us to be, I'm being killed. I'm, yeah, and, they already have. We just had it. Yeah, we just had it the other day. Yeah, and, and I, and I promise you, it's, it's, we've been there over 20 years. And I couldn't count how many accidents have been in that, just that intersection alone. And we're just asking for the same thing. We have some type of resolution to fix that issue. So just to let you know, we had a long talk about it here at our commission uh, work session on Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. um, and since that time, we have a team from Pinellas County, FDOT, and our staff going out tomorrow morning at 7.30. It's Monday morning, Mayor. Uh, Monday morning? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for an obs field op observation to see what can be done in the short term. Um, you probably are aware of the Skinner Boulevard improvements coming. That'll yes. be construction starts in summer 2022, 2023. Sorry, 2023. Um, uh, and they're going to look at a lot of the things you just talked about. Um, 
when they go out in the field thing. Um, we've already been on the phone with uh, Forward Pinellas, which is Pinellas County's trans transportation planning organization. Um, they will be out there. They're our coordinator to FDOT. Um, I know a lot of people have said to just, just make those flashing yellows, reds, which I would love to do, except that it's, it's an un, according to FDOT, it's an unacceptable um, traffic tool. Um, so we've been talking with everybody since that accident happened, what was that, Monday? Mm -hmm. Monday. Yeah. yeah. So we're on it, but I think we can do the, the car as yeah. you mentioned, and um, get the decoy car back out. Yeah, so Jennifer's on it, but I, we really appreciate it because you are you're right there. Yes, ma'am. And and we've we've found that we've got some, I guess, uh, for Pinellas put or the county put some cameras out there. Yes. Um, so we we have that as well to review. Um, I've been sitting there myself, and people go flying by. So yes, yes. I also They do have a stop sign. They just don't. And and that was the problem before. Yes. They were not, before those automatic lights, they weren't stopping then either. You're right. Um, and so they were just flying through there. So we put the automated lights on in hopes to alert drivers that they're coming because if they're not going to push the button. So, yeah. Now we get it. Um, yeah, we've heard exactly. Them just yes. mm -hmm. And I mean, we've called mm -hmm. 911 at least three to four times yes. and went out to their aid. Mm -hmm. And we also live behind yes. the barbecue station. Gotcha. So we hear all the speaking, so we're always flying out the house. And this last time yes. we walked up there and there was a puddle of blood on the ground. Yeah, and there's a lot of other issues there too. So at sunrise and sunset, it's really hard to hear or see, depending on which direction. You know, in the morning, if you're heading east, you've yeah. got the sun in your eyes. In the evening, if you're heading west, you've got the sun in your eyes blinding you. Now, with the time change, I don't know how that's going to affect everything, but that's right. a problem. It's been a problem for me when I... Even it will be fine. And then at, the ni and then mm -hmm. at night, people have a misguided thinking that, mm -hmm. that, that the trail's closed and nobody's on it. So even if the flashing lights, they can keep going. Not true. Yeah. Because there is that section in Dead Eden that is open. And people aren't, I don't want to, I'm not blaming others, but no. there's not enough of an education out there now that tells people what's open and what's closed mm -hmm. on the trail. So there are people between Skinner and downtown that are on that trail, and then they cross over and, mm -hmm. you know, go to their house a block up. They figure they can do that, but it's dark. And other mm -hmm. people think, oh, the trail's closed, so nobody's on it. So there's all these um, mitigating factors that are happening. So, you know, uh, Commissioner Toronga brought up putting some signage out there, at least telling the people crossing the, the road itself, the pedestrians, yes. you know, the, the danger intersection or whatever, they'll be looking at that on Monday as well. So you're going to have all the right traffic planning minds out there Monday morning at 730 to try to determine what can be done until the, the new road design gets put in place. So, but thank you so much for, you know, you. putting you for yourself hearing. out there and coming here and expressing your concerns. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, I think we were, I think we all <coughs> kind of hit our, our point. Yeah. Monday. So anyway, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You. Love your barbecue too. Love your barbecue. Your, yeah. <laughs> by the way, yeah, by the way. All right. Anybody else wish to come forward for citizen input? Anything that's not on the agenda already? Okay. All right. So now we have a presentation uh, for the First Presbyterian Church sesquicentennial centennial uh, celebration proclamation. Um, I'm going to turn that over to Vice Mayor Gao, and who from the church is going to come up and accept this thing? Everybody can come up. Y'all can come up. Everybody, come on. Everybody can come up. Everybody. Come on, everybody. 
And Mayor, I'm, I'm so happy that you read the type of celebration. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I said it right, but <laughs> sesquicentennial. Is that That's it? That's right. Yeah, there you go. It's, I you studied it for like funny. ten I'm minutes. <laughs> Very exciting moment and event tonight, and especially as a proud member of First Presbyterian Church. It's like it's Sunday in here. <laughs> First Presbyterian Church, 150th anniversary. Whereas First Presbyterian Church of Dunedin is commemorating its 150th anniversary, and we invite communities and congregations to come together to celebrate this marvelous occasion. And whereas in 1868, the Reverend Joseph Brown, a Presbyterian missionary, arrived in our village, and in 1871, with nine members, Formed, formed the Bethesda Presbyterian Church, our city's first faith community. And whereas in 1926, church members L.B. and Mary Skinner provided the funds to construct a new, much larger sanctuary in a Mediterranean revival style. Well, it's got different kinds in there, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, the church was renamed First Presbyterian Church of Dunedin. And whereas the church has served as a spiritual home of many of our community's leaders, nurturing their service to our, to our city, including J.O. Douglas, James Somerville, who gave Dunedin its name, Skinner, Douglas, and Wilkie, who are honored with street names, leaders, with, leaders such as Vivian Skinner Grant and Gladys Douglas Hackworth, and many leaders and volunteers in our community today. And whereas... The church and its members have faithfully worked for the well-being of our community by planting other local churches and helping found and or support various community agencies and efforts including religious community service, now Hope Villages, Dunedin Cares, the Homeless Empowerment Program, the Dunedin Historical Society, including the donation of its former sanctuary, Andrews Chapel, the United Faith Walk of Peace, refugee resettlement, and the preservation of our natural resources, such as Honeymoon and Caledesi Islands, and the, Cal and the Gladys Douglas Preserve. And whereas the church proudly supports our city's Scottish heritage, along with our community's broad diversity as a direct descendant of the Church of Scotland. Now, therefore, I, Jeff Gow, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the mayor of the city of Dunedin, and on behalf of the entire City Commission, do hereby proclaim November 4th, 2021, as First Presbyterian Church Day in Dunedin, Florida, and encourage all citizens of Dunedin to pay special tribute to this church on the occasion of their 150th anniversary. Say a few words. Yes, Is that please. All right, Madam Mayor? I, you mentioned it was Sunday, Jeff, and so I. <laughs> <laughs> I no, promise I won't take more than twenty minutes, and I'll <laughs> I'll delete the altar call. <laughs> but I did come prepared. Well, uh, Madam Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, it is on behalf of First Presbyterian Church of Dundee that I do have the honor of thanking all of you for this honor. Uh, as you noted, uh, Jeff, in the proclamation. Uh, as the first, first faith community of Dunedin, our congregation's roots in and connection to uh, this wonderful place uh, run deep. And as far back as 1868 to the present day, uh, we've worked uh, for the spiritual, mental, and physical well-being, not just of our congregation, but for this whole community. I always appreciate this quote from the Jewish prophet Jeremiah who said, Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your own welfare. And I pray that we as a congregation get to continue to do that for at least another 150 years. <laughs> also, as the proclamation notes, many of our city's leaders have been a part of our congregation, including even some of you uh, on the dice uh, tonight. 
Uh, the rest of you, of course, are always welcome. And as far as I'm aware, the light, lightning has never struck our bell tower, at least while worship was happening. I'm at, your, if, I'm at your daughter church. <laughs> that's, that's right. And if, if lightning hasn't struck our church with the lot that we have, currently have, I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> Um, and I do take great pride uh, uh, in, in, in that, uh, in that many of our leaders do come from, uh, from their congregation, not because the church gets to be associated uh, with impressive people, although many of you all are, all of you are impressive, but I take pride in that, uh, particularly because it means that the church has been successful, successful mm -hmm. in at least part of our mission in terms of shaping and nurturing people to serve to serve others, and to work diligently in pursuing the common good for all of our community's citizens, following the way of Jesus who said, I have come not to be served, but to serve. And as many of our churches, we of course recently celebrated All Saints Day, remembering those who've gone before us, who've taught us, nurtured, inspired us. In our Presbyterian tradition, I like to say that we reserve sainthood not just for a special few, but that all of us get to be saints, and that we are saints not so much because of what a few individuals have accomplished, but because of what God has accomplished in really all of us. And I can think that could be a very helpful way, of course, for us to, to look at history and to look at saints because, well, the truth of the matter is most of us are all some sort of combination of both saint and sinner. We are human, and as humans, we often fail. As an example of this, recently, as we have been digging a little bit freshly into some of our church's own history, we discovered something that is, quite frankly, uh, shameful. As many of you know, the Dunedin City Cemetery was, in fact, formerly our property until 1927, the site of our first sanctuary. However, we realized recently, discovered recently, that when we deeded it to the city in 1927, we included in the deed what is known as a racial covenant, restricting its use for, quote, members of the Caucasian race only. Well, thanks be to God, the Supreme Court years ago decided that such racial uh, covenants were uh, unconstitutional and illegal. Nevertheless, I do want to say clearly that such a thing was and is wrong. It was wrong. It was wrong of us. Uh, in church, we'd actually call it a sin. <laughs> And although it's almost 100 years too late, it is a sin that recently our church governing, go, church's governing board confessed of and confesses of and repents from. And I'll note, of course, that this racial covenant was, that we included uh, in the property deed was not invented out of thin air and for this only this one occasion, but was in fact indicative of many racial covenants that were involved in, in property ownership and transfer uh, throughout much of the 20th century, not just here in Dunedin, but in thousands of other places across our country. And unfortunately, it's a sin that we still deal with today because we have tremendous discrepancies, racial discrepancies in wealth because our homes are such an important <clears throat> avenue, important means, resource for uh, accumulating and transmitting uh, wealth. But nevertheless, I do want to thank you all. Thank you all tremendously. Uh, for this honor, and more than that, the great honor that we have had for 150 years and more of serving Dunedin, of helping doing what we can to help build this place up, and, and we vow to continue that work, confessing our failures, but also celebrating our successes uh, until Dunedin is finally and fully that beloved community for all of our citizens that the beloved community that I know that God intends for us and for all. Thank you. So, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Because um, we're going we're gonna to do the uh, historic piece, too. So, uh, yep, come on down. Maybe you guys can just slide to the side, but just still stay. <laughs> but, still, but still stay standing. There, it won't yeah. take that long. And try to do it in a choreo choreographed manner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we will have a chance to. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna let us do it at the end. I figured it would, would make sense. Would, yeah. Okay, so real quick, she's just gonna do a quick presentation. This is a second reading, so uh, hang on one second. Let me get to that. 
Okay, we have the second reading of Ordinance 2131, Historical Landmark Designation for 455 Scotland Street. Nikki, can you please read that uh, ordinance by title only? Ordinance number 21-31, an ordinance of the City of Dunedin, Florida, designating the home located at 455 Scotland Street as a historic landmark and providing for an effective date. And this has been reading of Ordinance 21-31 on second reading by title only. Okay, I've got Deborah making the motion and Vice Mayor Gal doing the second. Um, Holly. <laughs> Ready to go? Yep. Cool. Okay, this is Ordinance 21-31, second reading for 455 Scotland Street. Uh, thank you for having me, commissioners, mayor. And um, I'll just give you something brief here. Um, on behalf of the First Presbyterian Church, the applicant <laughs> is Dr. David Sheeler, who is seeking to place a historic landmark designation located at 455 Scotland Street. The First Presbyterian Church of Dunedin was originally a gift from Dunedin personalities L.B. and Mary Skinner, who additionally donated the church's new organ and sanctuary as well as playing the role as architect. The sanctuary was originally built in 1926 in the Spanish Revival architectural style, a style inspired from the Mediterranean Revival where it bodied such features like Spanish red-tiled roof, half-rounded windows and doors, and thick stucco walls packed with crushed shell. The First Presbyterian Church intends to designate this property as a historic landmark to celebrate the church's prominent history in Dunedin and its significant impact of outreach within the community. I did find something that I kind of wanted to read. Um, so it just happened when I was doing research for a different historic application. I actually found something uh, from the Dunedin Times in 1925. Um, it was a piece that Skinner actually wrote to the Dunedin Times about the church. Uh -oh. So, Ooh. if you mind. No, that's no, cool. For it. Okay. So, realizing the ne necessity that calls for the erection of a larger and more adequate church, and realizing the difficulties of the committee has met with to accomplish this, we have decided to make the congregation this offer. First, that the present church be moved south far enough to make room for a new church auditorium on the present site, and second, build underneath a basement suitable for the social and Sunday school community activities of the church, kitchen, etc. The committee feels that they can raise the money for this and the church will stand the expense. We agree to build an ad adequate church building of proper design and that's large enough for years to come to cost not less than $35,000. <laughs> Who does that, um, right? Yeah. <laughs> not less. Uh, and we'll present it to the church as our thank offering for the many blessings God has bestowed upon us during our life in our beloved Dunedin. Fourth, that as much as the present name of the church does not properly apply to the present one and would not apply to the new one, we suggest that the name be changed to the First Presbyterian Church of Dunedin and that proper steps be taken to present this about. If the congregation sees fit to accept our offer, we will build the church sometime during the coming year after the present church has been moved to its new location. Yours very truly, Mr. and Mrs. L.B. Skinner. Wow, that's so cool. That was great. That's very cool. Very cool. Thank, Thank you, Molly. Welcome. All right, I just have a couple official things I have to do before we get to celebrate. So, um, any questions for Molly? Right? No? Oh, but Molly is awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anybody wishing to come forward and say anything about this item? Okay, seeing you hearing now, and come back to the commissioners. Um, final comments on the historical part, because after that, once we vote, we'll have final comments on the whole thing. So, okay. And then just wait till wait till after. Okay. Roll call vote, please. <laughs> sorry, I was paying attention to. That. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so much emotion, right? Yes, too much. Commissioner Franey. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Toringa. Aye. Vice Mayor Gao. Aye. Commissioner Kynes. Aye. Mayor Bajowski. Aye, and the motion passes unanimously. So, Commissioner Kynes, would you please go down and make the presentation to the, now the group can shimmy this way if they want to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, well, I'd, I'd like to say, I'm, you know, it's my great honor to make this presentation. And I also want to say in my heart 
this also goes to Vivian Skinner Grant. She was so, so for our history. She really started the Historical yep. Society. And so Vivian, this one's for you. <laughs> right, go down there and make a presentation. get to speak again if you'd like. <laughs> it's will. all about you. I won't consume any more of the commission's uh, time, but just uh, again to <laughs> offer uh, uh, our thanks uh, to, to you all as the commission, and certainly to the, the, the city staff, and, and Deborah had mentioned it, of course, last, uh, last meeting too, many thanks to the Historic Preservation Committee and, and uh, not only helping us with this designation, but creating the, the, the whole uh, a code uh, for it that uh, that I think it's a great a great code that helps uh, uh, helps us recognize our roots and and yet breathe life into into our future to know where we've come from to know where we can go to so it's a great gift Absolutely. anybody else wish to say anything you're all invited to our worship service on Sunday where we will be unveiling this and celebrating on and on and on. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'll, I will uh, start with Commissioner Kang. Well, I mean, it's just a beautiful, it's a med rev, med Mediterranean revival. I can't say sequicentential, Larry, but <laughs> still can't say that. I've got something, I got something wrong here. But, um, you know, it's such a beautiful, beautiful sanctuary, and the exquisite detail that you all have kept it so beautiful. Everything that you ever did to change anything, it was just done so precisely and with such a preservation of its integrity. It's, we're so pleased to be able to have this designation. And I've been hearing from people in the neighborhood and they're going, this is so exciting. We're so proud of them. So thank all of you all. Thank you so much. And 150 years. <laughs> it's you. fabulous. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I first wanted to acknowledge uh, the writing of the wrong and how proud I am that regardless of when it happened, thank you, I would, thank you. Uh, <laughs> that you guys had, had, had this, uh, the, the, the strength to do that. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that the city had also found that strength. And on June 2nd, 1975, uh, the, 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 the city voted, the commission voted uh, for a quick claim deed to erase that covenant from that, so that 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 wrong has been righted on on both sides, and so I just think that's really important to acknowledge. So thank you all for doing that tonight. Other than that, just growing up in Dunedin, and you see street name after street name, and some of them make sense, and some of them don't. And they're named after people, and you don't know who these people are. But then you see them on street signs, and then you see the parks named after them, and you see them in old newsprint and things of that nature. And and as you mature as a child, you get it starts to build and you start to understand and then you start going to the church and you hear them as members and it's just amazing just because it's just being a, a person of service is personal to me and reaching back and being involved in the community and so for me to belong to a, a, a church of such strength and uh, fortitude on, on wanting to give back to the community and know that that's not just me, but it's the members of the church, it's members of the community, and the strength of the tie between church and community and service is just so strong in our community. And so I'm just really proud of, of the, the starting of the church and, and the fact that it continues 150 years later, and it's all driven and built on service and giving back. And so I'm just proud that you guys are, are here to receive this tonight, so thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Commissioner Torga. Thank you. Pastor David, I had the opportunity this afternoon at 2 o'clock to meet with my pastor, Jason Knott, at the First United Methodist Church, 
and I confessed to him that I would not be there on Sunday. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, I, 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 I did my best. Um, we actually did talk about service, and we talked about uh, the, the fact that the church is in the community. And of course, we're both in the community, both, uh, both of our churches. But um, I, I, I made the confession. And I don't know, maybe you can help. I don't know. <laughs> say, an, say an extra prayer, right? If you talk to, if you talk to Pastor Jason Knott, that would be thank you. Write a letter. I should be talking about our first <laughs> Well, what he told me about you was... Thank God, uh, <laughs> thank God you guys hold good secrets, right? <laughs> thank you, thank Commissioner. You. Commissioner Franey. Uh, well, I did bring this up last uh, time for the, when you were here for the historic plaque. But um, so, you know, one of my fondest things about the church was in 1999 when we were going to celebrate our centennial of becoming incorporated. And, and it's funny, Deborah, when you bring up Vivian, yeah. the first thing I got, of course, I'm just a staffer, you know, <laughs> relatively young at the time and uh, compared to now. And, um, and I remember the first thing I got when I got named the chair of the Centennial Task Force was a letter from Vivian Grant. <laughs> and it was on her old typewriter, right, right? And it basically was pretty much schooling me about the correct history, yeah. <laughs> and I better get it right as I lead the charge for the year. So, oh yeah, gosh. so good old Vivian, she was awesome. She was. Um, and of course, I talked about on June 1st, the day of incorporation, 1999, all the churches rang their bells, and of course, the oldest church bell rang, which was your church bell. So. Um, but I, I just want to say, Pastor Dave, that was emotional, what you just said. I mean, that, I'm so impressed with you. If I was going to change religion, you'd be. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only time I've ever questioned your judgment was when you rode your bike to the Highland Games in a, with a kilt on. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, um, I, I have been to your church. I've visited it several times because I know quite a few people who go to it. And... Um, it's, it's always just, it's an impressive place with impressive people who give a lot, who, just like you said, the service component. And, you know, from a religious standpoint, you know, you, you want to, that's what churches are really supposed to be about, right? Giving back. And so I really appreciate your comments, but I appreciate your parishioners because you have amazing parishioners um, and, and they do give back and their heart's been there, but you're an amazing leader and uh, you're inclusive your inclusiveness and the way you approach, uh, you know, just social justice issues is extremely impressive. Thank you. We think so too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank He's you. He's a keeper. <laughs> you know, I, I talk a lot about growing up here. Um, I came here in 1972 when I was five. So you can do the math. I'm 55 now. Um, so 50 years ago, um, and I actually was baptized before then and was a part of Faith Presbyterian Church, which was on the corner of Union and Highland. And I think at the time, they may have been the only, I don't know that Michigan was built yet, but and it may have been, but that was where my family went. And um, in high school, a lot of my friends Laurie White, and, a, and I, a whole other slew that I could name was in the youth program at your church. A number of my high school friends, as people in high school, did get married. That was that was uh, back in the day, you know, us old farts. But uh, had gotten married there. I'd been to a no number of my friends' weddings there, so they had been parishioners. And then when Faith Presbyterian sold, they couldn't find a new location. And so th their folks spread out between basically First Presbyterian and the Michigan Avenue, Michigan Boulevard Church. So um, I ended over there. But a lot of the parishioners um, that I know from, they're long gone now, but uh, ended up at your church. And so it was, uh, I always felt connected in that way, just because there was so many crossovers. Um, and, you know, the things that you've done, like what you said, the historical piece of it with um, the bells for the centennial. And, um, but I will never be more impressed 
Nothing will ever impress me more than the generosity of you and your congregation when it came to the Gladys Douglas property. That's right. Because you really set the bar high to everybody else, you know, and you put your community first. Um, and you set an example, and, and you know, I'd like to think that that inspired others. I, I, I believe it did. It certainly inspired me. And I know we talked a couple of times um, to the other beneficiaries as well as just everyday people. So that was just, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. And I think that reflects who you are, who your congregation is, and what you all believe in and stand for. So that to me is priceless. And I want to stop crying now. <laughs> oh, God. So um, we already voted. We're good. Uh, so congratulations on both your 150th birthday. And it's today, right? It's, is it the 4th? Is that what we said? That's what we... Oh, oh, is there a, is there a, a, we didn't pick a day, it's just the year, yeah. and you wanted to do it, okay. And we actually don't know exactly when, in 1871, the church was chartered. We think it was April, but I don't know that there's a date. <laughs> well, now it's November 4th, so... Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but, but... Um, Does the city manager want to say anything? Yeah, I was, I was going to oh, turn well, over. I just didn't want to forget her. No, no, I'm not going to forget her, um, because she... She quit my church and went to your church. <laughs> Her and Dave. But I, that, but I, I figure it, re it really wasn't about the church. It was really more about that they moved. No, you it know? was about the church. Stop it. Stop it. Because then you will get stampeded by the other Presbyterian church. Um, but I would like to see the church bells ringing again. You know? And we've got to find a reason to have all the church bells ringing again, I think. There's got to be something great going on in Dunedin that we can do that for because I, I just. It's their sequicentennial. Well, <laughs> I think they let's can figure that out. out. I don't know, but I mean, let's, let's figure it out and let's advertise it, and, you know, so that people will understand where it's coming from. Be waiting wait for it. Jennifer, also a member. Yes. Well, I just want to say that that one of the uh, the benefits of being a member of this church is that traditionally sermons are only about 13 minutes long. So. <laughs> And they're wonderful so, servants. So, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. It depends on the subject. No, it's a wonderful giving church. And the fellowship at the church is, is just something that, I mean, you just feel the love when you're there. And just the, 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 the giving aspect and the support of, of the environment and the city itself and the community is in this church is uh, really what attracted my husband and myself. It's just exceptional. It, it, it truly is. And you just feel it the minute you walk in. And, um, and uh, they have also have a very good sense of humor, which I appreciate, you know, <laughs> most of them. But, um, but I'm just glad to see all of them this evening and, and look forward to the, to the next 150 years. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, guys. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little five-minute break in case you all want to leave and make noise and all that stuff. Um, but we are going to right after come back and do the GDP if anybody wants to stick around. All we're doing is uh, um, changing the zoning so so that it'll be preserved forever. We got one more. Yeah, we have that too. But I mean, I just knew some of you might want to stay for that, but you don't have to. So we're going to take a little break and give you the chance to hightail it out of here and go celebrate somewhere if you'd like to do that too. Seth would like to get a photo. Oh, oh yeah. Seth wants to get a photo for social media, please. We could probably get, yeah. if you all stand up.
All right, we are <laughs> welcome back to our regularly scheduled commission meeting. We will now go to a very exciting item, which is uh, annexation ordinance 2132, land use plan designation 2133, and zoning district designation 2134, all for the Gladys Douglas. Gladys E. Douglas Preserve located on Keene in Virginia. Um, so I'm going to have her read the first ordinance. You can do the presentation on the whole thing if you want. And then, but we're still going to have to go through the, the normal process of voting and everything. So we'll do annexation first, Nikki, by title only, please. Ordinance number 21-32, an ordinance of the city of Dunedin, Florida, annexing certain real property located at Keene Road and 1900 Virginia Avenue, parcel number 36281500000230010 and 36281500000240010. with a pro with designated meets and bounds and totaling approximately 43.44 acres into the corporate limits of the city, providing for filing with the clerk of court and providing for an effective date. And this has been reading of ordinance 21-32 on first reading by title only. And mayor, since the zoning ordinance will be quasi judicial and I think staff intends to do one presentation, I'll just go ahead and quick swear in anyone that intends to speak so that you'll be receiving testimony um, for the zoning ordinance as well. So do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're going to give tonight will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Do you want to ask anybody in the office? Uh, in the if, if anyone else intends to speak on it, we'll go ahead and swear you in now, too. So if anyone intends to speak on any of these three items, stand up and we'll swear you in. Even for public comment, just so that all of the, all of the comments can be considered. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you'll give this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Great. Okay. <laughs> now you're all set, Mayor. All righty. Um... <clears throat> I need a motion to approve the annexation, please. So moved. Okay, Commissioner, okay. Commissioner Franey and Commissioner Kynes. Okay, Joseph, you're Good on. Evening. I didn't know if the city manager had any opening remarks as you technically doing. the applicant. So. Uh, good evening, Joseph DePasqua, the Assistant Director of Community Development on behalf of the Community Development Department. And yes, we're pleased tonight uh, to bring you the first readings of these three ordinances. And if, uh, as the mayor mentioned, we're, I'm going to do one collective presentation on the annexation following uh, the, with the land use and then, of course, the zoning district, a designation of the property. So the, again, this is an application for those three items. Uh, by way of background, before I go into the exhibits, uh, as most people probably know and uh, are aware, uh, the city did acquire these two properties in May of this year uh, with the significant uh, financial assistance from Pinellas County and along with other generous contributions uh, of many others so they could be preserved as parklands. Um, so now, of course, the next step is, is this evening. Now that the acquisition is complete, we want to annex the property into the city of Dunedin, place an appropriate underlying land use, and then, of course, a zoning district designation onto the property. Once that does happen, assuming it's approved tonight, and I'm fairly confident that will happen, uh, then we'll transmit the land use uh, change to uh, following the countywide plan rules and then bring back all three ordinances once that process has completed to the city commission for second and final reading of all three ordinances. So if I could, I'd just like to walk you through some of the exhibits to familiarize everybody who might be watching. I know everybody in the room is familiar with the site. This is that larger scale aerial we usually provide, which you can see the location of the two subject parcels. The first parcel, and I'll, I'll just move to the second slide because it zooms in a little closer. So you're seeing the first parcel, parcel number one, is roughly 33.24 acres. Parcel number two is a little over 10 acres. The parcels in total are roughly 44 acres. They are bounded by Keene Road to the west and Virginia Avenue to the south, and you can see Jerry Lake in the upper uh, right-hand corner, and this Dunedin Cemetery is abutting it to the north. Here is another just bird's eye angle. This would be facing, uh, sh basically looking to the east. You see Keene Road at the bottom of the screen. You can see the preserve and the, and the, the lake behind it, and then the road running directly 
to the right of the property is uh, Virginia Avenue. So what parcels are being annexed? So as you can see, again, we, we have a parcel map here. The two parcels we've identified uh, are split down that, down that uh, de dedicated uh, but vacated right of way between both parcels. Parcel to the west is the larger parcel and the parcel to the east is the smaller parcel. And again, in total, roughly 44 acres. So how, how and why are we annexing the property other than the obvious that we own it and want to be in the city? So what we've done to put together a, a quick map for you so you can understand how it's bounded by the municipal boundaries. So as you can see, to the north and to the west is the Dunedin city limits represented by that, that light tan or cream color. The, par the parcels that are identified in the unincorporated area are gray. And then you can see the city of Clearwater actually abuts the property to the south uh, off of Virginia Avenue. So I just want to let, let you know that that's where the, the parcel boundaries sit today in relationship to municipal boundaries. And then one last overview is how the property sits in relationship to the flood zone. We've, we've had some new flood map changes, as you know. So you can see the lion's share of the property sits outside the 100 and 500 year floodplain. That's represented by that light gray. The uh, cream color you see there is outside the 100 year, but within the 500 year floodplain. And then the blue area, as you imagine, which borders the water and the low lying areas around it are in a special flood hazard area within AE flood zone uh, designation with a base flood elevation of 47 feet. Of course, the buildings that are sitting on the property now are outside the flood zone, as you can see, as those little, little water marks are where the buildings are roughly located on the property. And then the final exhibit, uh, you may recall as, as a condition of the acquisition that there had to be a, a conservation easement placed on the property with two different segments of it. That has been put onto the county's parcel map. So I just wanted to show you how that looks on the ground. You may recall the exhibit was part of the annex, it was part of the acquisition, but that's the, that's the actual conservation easement area placed on the larger parcel one. So that is, is how the property sits today and the easements that are, are sitting on top of it. So from an annexation standpoint, the property is within the Dunedin planning area, so it's envisioned and recommended that it we become part of the city. Moving to the future land use plan designation, the parcel one, which is just has a Keene Road identification for an address, the larger parcel, as it sits in Pinellas County today, it is residential suburban, and the city's proposed land use where we want to place on an entire parcel is recreation ocean, op open space, which is consistent with parklands. Uh, throughout the city and frankly throughout the county. The second parcel, as it sits today, is partially in residential low and preservation. And we are recommending to replace the residential low portion with again the recreation open space and then keeping the county's preservation where we'd be placing or, or removing the county's preservation designation and placing ours on it in its place. So I'll show you how that looks today in the county. Here is a map of the Pinellas County, you can see our area is white because this is their map database. But again, to orient you, the Dunedin Cemetery is to the north of the parcel. You can see the large parcel one is residential suburban. And then the smaller parcel is RL, residential low. And then the green area is at preservation. So everything in RS and RL would become recreation open space. And we would again carry on the preservation or that green area uh, in the city's comp uh, future land use map would be the same, would be preservation as well. We will send shape files to the county to match those lines identically. So now here's looking at our uh, future land use map, and you can see that to the north, the cemetery has got an institutional land use. The area is shown as white, because obviously it's not on our base map yet, but we'd be looking to carry the ROS and the preservation onto the next, uh, I'll show you on the next slide, that we would be carrying the res recreation, recreational open spaces at light green, and this is just a map of what we're proposing, and then the P would, would carry on synonymous the way it sits today, would be our preservation land use. So that's what the recommendation is in the second ordinance. And then finally, after annexation and placing the underlying land use, we are recommending that we change the zoning across the property 
from the larger parcel is recreational, uh, excuse me, residential agricultural district in the county, and we would change that to the city's MPL or municipal public lands. And the smaller parcel, 1900 Virginia Avenue property, we would change that also from residential agricultural district in the county to municipal public lands, MPL. Again, this is consistent with what we've done with park lands throughout the city, and it would cover all of the parcels, including the area that is preservation. So just taking that zoning across, which is consistent with what the county has today and what we do throughout the city. So as you can see today, the county has their zoning that goes completely across both parcels as RA, and we would be replacing that with our MPL, which is right now the, the cemetery is MPL, and we would replace that, as you can see, across both parcels. It would be MPL zoning in place uh, on both parcels in their entirety. That being said, staff's recommendation is, of course, to approve Ordinance 21-32 for voluntary uh, annexation of parcels 1 and parcels 2 into the, into the city of Dunedin. Secondly, to recommend approval of Ordinance 21-32 30, uh, 33 to designate parcel one as recreation open space ROS and parcel two as recreation open space and preservation as shown on the exhibits. And then finally, after annexation to uh, place the through ordinance 21-34 to designate both parcels, parcel one and parcel two as municipal public lands MPL. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Um can we ask all the questions for all three items here? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, I'll start with you, Vice Mayor. And, and, and thank you for letting us do all of them all at once. Because Well, we still have to vote three we'll times. You'll vote three times, and I still have more ordinances to read, but you're, we're, we're going to streamline it as much as possible. It was just a matter of which questions go with which one. And I, <laughs> That's fine. I wasn't going to be able to do that. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I guess I uh, just have a few questions, actually. Are... The, the the zoning the the land zoning is that as restrictive as we can be? I mean, what what does that allow us? To, can we have ball fields on there? Can we have uh, uh, a dirt bike track? Um, so the the proposed zoning, Vice Mayor, is is MPL, and that and MPL does not actually have a list of permitted and conditional use. It's up to the discretion of the City Commission, but it is generally for municipal public lands. It would include anything that the city believes is appropriate for that. So we, we don't have it listed as a, a, a use. What's hammock? I, I, well, I'll, the, I was going to say I can jump in because um, you may recall when you acquired the property, there were three recorded instruments that were recorded simultaneously with the closing. A dedication agreement, which, re, which provides for the name of the Doug, Gladys E. Douglas Preserve, a declaration as to permissible uses, which is enforceable by Pinellas County and with third party notice rights to the Pinellas County Community Foundation, which restricts the uses on the property to passive uh, green space and passive public park uses. And you may remember that description of that large paragraph of anything. So all of those still apply. And those are restrictions that stay on the property. Those were recorded at closing. This now is a makes the zoning consistent with that. But those restrictions apply even if it were to stay a different zoning um, in part as Joey mentioned not only for the consistency of the zoning but you also agreed in the interlocal funding agreement with um, Pinellas County to place those same restrictions um, on the property um, and to apply to annex the property into the city so when you speak about is this the most restrictive that you can be I'll tell you another reason why that's the case once you designate, once you annex it in and designate it as recreation open space, that triggers your section of our charter. 104 of the city charter, which provides that it cannot be sold, donated, or transferred, or conveyed without approval by a referendum of the elected. So when you talk about putting the restrictions on the property, these three ordinances are the final belt and suspenders, but they are not negating anything that you have already done and the reuse restrictions that you put on the property at closing. So I just want to make sure that's clear. So thank you. So, so mm -hmm. let me just say, so the zoning doesn't do everything the city attorney just says. It just enables you to, to complete, the, complete the loop, so to speak. Exactly. It enables you to have a consistent zoning mm -hmm. with a recreation open space land use category and a, um, and, yeah. and um, 
been consistent with the city's comprehensive plan. And thank you for that. I just thought it was important to go through that uh, so that the public could hear it and know that the, the, the passion and the effort and energy that they put into this, that we're still with them. We aren't, we aren't dropping the ball. Uh, but then still back to the land use, and you, it was acknowledged on parcel two that there's that portion of it, there's a portion of parcel two that's going to be preservation. And, and you might have said it, and I apologize, Joe, if I, if I wasn't following, but those, portion, those portions that are preserved, why are those preserved and not in recreational open space? And especially where on parcel one, that's where the county is, right? We had the concern over the flora and the fauna and the, the unique um, uh, plants that were there, why those aren't preserved. The, the character of preservation is a little different than recreation open space. So typically preservation areas are wetlands, typically closer to water. The characteristics of them are a little bit different than recreation open space. Um, but you're, you're right. So what, what, what we're proposing to do is put recreational open space across everything except the area that will remain in preservation, which is the area basically bordering the lake and that comes down along the uh, south side of the property. Okay. Thank you. That's all that I had. Commissioner Frey? I don't have any questions. Um, you know, I think I was confusing that. I, I was almost thinking preservation was what Nikki was talking about, uh, was that special rosemary, uh, bald, bald, bald rosemary uh, like lichen. That's the conservation easement that's granted to Pinellas County over the portion that um, Joey put up on the screen. That top, yeah, that area. So that's that subject to an additional conservation easement to Pinellas County that has further restrictions than the use agreement that the use restrictions that apply to the whole really parcel. Like Does that make sense? I do, and so I think I was just. Uh, commingling somehow conservation and preservation the preservation area is what you're saying is where the home is now is that the present no it, it, he's i think what joey was showing is that the only area that's truly preservation wetland wetland preservation is border is, border is the border around, around the lake around almost the, the lake. area that they showed within the hundred year floodplain roughly um but it it's not that those terms aren't sometimes used similarly they are but you can um in this instance, you, you'll have a recreation open space area that's subject to an additional conservation easement, but according to staff's interpretation, you know, that wouldn't necessarily be a quote preservation area. And there are certain things that can be done in that preservation easement area that the county and the city can agree to over time, including, you know, docks and walkways and things like that. So they may have wanted to leave that subject to those restrictions that are in the conservation easement rather than um, implementing another layer of preservation, recreation, or, or land use um, area. But I can let Joey speak to that, but yeah. that's the how they work together. Yeah, and because the property is still bounded by Pinellas County, the, uh, the idea would be to keep that continuous preservation area land use, whether it's our preservation or the county's, and those lines are going are gonna to line up exactly with our designation once we remove the county's and put ours in its place. So, so that part stays preservation, and no, that line doesn't change. The part up by the lake. Yeah. The part by the lake, yes, exactly. And I'd, uh, I'd just like to put it on the record again. Uh, I believe Nikki spoke to it, but what is the, the usage to be that was very carefully uh, put in the contract? What form of recreational usage is going to be allowed? So in the areas outside of the conservation easement, so not the bub anything outside of the blue, but within the white um, has to be limited to green space, passive public park, which may include walking and biking trails through the remaining property, appurtenances, improvements associated therewith, including open air pavilions. Do you want me to read this? Well, I, th I, I think passive. Yes. We're looking at passive. That I had that, I had a question. Is this really going to be a passive park? Correct, it is. Yes, well, yes, those, those were those same restrictions yeah. that you all considered and, and vetted, those are, those are still what governs the park. And this is 
as Joey mentioned, this is now carrying forward all those actions that you said that you would do to protect it in perpetuity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, any I'm questions? Good, thank you. I have a couple questions. Um, what, and I don't know who's going to answer this. It might be Nikki. So. I'm just trying to jump in no, with no, some of the legal okay. stuff so right. that Joey's this, not having But this to, may be a question for you. So I believe that those two parcels have two different addresses, don't they? Actually, the, the parcel that has the property on it, the smaller one, it has a street address assigned to it. The other one just has a keen road. It does not actually have a street so, address. So for ease in the future, I don't know that anybody's thought about it, but I mean, we kind of, when we do this annexation and changes and we turn it to the county and I don't know how it gets registered, but I'd like it to have one address. We can try I mean, to because ask Because I will tell you, and I, let me tell you why. If you look over... The, the Fisher Field and Highlander Field is the baseball. It's all one piece of property, but it's multiple addresses. Your kid gets hit by baseball and you tell them where you're at and the fire trucks don't know where to go. I mean, it's crazy town over there. And the, and it, but it's all one piece of property. So, I mean, n not that they're going to be playing baseball here. Don't want to panic anybody, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's all different addresses and when emergency services comes, you know, we want to have one address. I don't know how to make that happen, but hopefully you guys well, Addresses are assigned by the United States Postal Service and it's usually without regard to any, that's why those, at, those people who have a Clearwater, or who are actually in the state of Clearwater may have a Dunedin address right below. So they don't assign addresses based on your actual municipal boundaries or limits. They assign them based on census data and we can try, we can- We, we can, actually have a process. For yeah, we, we can do address work with assignments. Mm -hmm. So if the- I mean, the, just keeping the address the consensus is not, whatever is, is fine with me. I'm just, I just want to make all, sure there's not going to be two. Yeah. I, I because, think, because even Hammock Park, has so many entrances and different addresses if you Google it. So I just want to make sure there's one address. Yeah, what we do, we, within community development, we do address assignments and it's, it's something we do have to notify everybody, 911, um, you know, all the, all the emergency service to county property. But it's something we could look to do is to put a singular street address on the entire parcel. We certainly can look to do that. Okay, that was one thing. Um, in the preserve area around the lake that you showed. Mm -hmm. um, what is allowed in preserve? Uh, very little. <laughs> I don't have uh, the I'm city's assuming, use. I'm assuming, but I mean, yeah, I just no, I, I, so I, I don't have I the use ask. matrix with me, Mayor, but what I did was I did print out just the, the land use category description, and it is um, it's intended to recognize natural resources, uh, features worthy of preservation. So that's really the goal of it, is to, you, is to preserve those areas. Um, typically, you would find them along, along water areas like this. But you could, you can have things like a dock and. Yes. Those yes. kinds of. Yeah, there there are accessory uses that are allowed, and I think that's all contemplated in the in the agreements as well. Right, that I know. I just wanted to make sure the zo the zoning land use was the appropriate. It wasn't going to tell us we couldn't do any of that. No. Okay. Um, the cemetery. The land use for that is, it was I, what was that? It's an institutional. Institution, what, is, what does that represent? That is, a, that is a, a land use that is typically put on, um, it can be put on public, but the, one of the identified uh, uses that you would typically find is, is cemetery. So it's usually public, semi-public uses, and oftentimes cemetery is the one, is the one they use for institutional. That's, that's fairly common in the county. I mean, is that like what we would have at City Hall too? It's the City Hall property. Uh, City Hall I, well, might, might be MPL, but yeah, yeah MPL would be the but the underlying <laughs> land use. No, the underlying. Oh yeah, I don't know. The underlying land use because it's in downtown is going to be CRD so, right. across okay. the board. But but Mayor, it also is civic spaces, um, churches, other types of places of like um, Joey mentioned, kind of public, schools. private. Yeah, schools. Um, Say it again. I keep wanting to call it industrial, but insti institutional. Institutional. Mm -hmm. Institutional. Okay. Yeah, schools is another good example. Schools is, yeah. So those are examples of uses you'd find with an with an institutional land use, and the overlying zoning may vary. If it's city owned, it may very well be MPL. So a question for you, Nikki. Mm -hmm. When you read our charter, mm -hmm. right? You, 
Um, your, and several of us were here when that got passed, so I, I understand what it is. But then you use the word conveyed, and you know, conveyed can mean a couple of different things. So I'm, what's your interpretation of what conveyed in that charter means? Given to someone else. Okay, that's it. That's what you well, see it as. So there's, I, I was summarizing your charter restrictions. No, I know. The whole but, paragraph, and there's a few exceptions in there where you can grant certain interests, in, but subject to the public purpose that the, that the property is serving. So, for example, a license like you have on Hammock Park to a caretaker to take care of that land is an appropriate license to have on that land, even under your charter, because that exists for the care of the benefit of the, par of the public purpose and the park, and that's an exception in the charter. But what it says is may not be sold, donated, or otherwise transferred or conveyed without prior approval. So what that means is ever it becoming not owned by the city of Dunedin in any okay. manner, whether for money, whether by donation, or whether by just transferring or conveying. It will always be property of the city of Dunedin unless a majority vote of, the re of your elected or your electorate <laughs> at a referendum votes in favor of selling it okay. or donating it or transferring it, giving someone else control. Gotcha. That's what I wanted to, y yeah. Because convey can mean a s several different things and I, I just want to make, you know, and you know, I don't mean to panic anybody when I say this, but what if we have to widen the road at the, at the cemetery? Because it's a one way in, one way out. It's, it fits one road. It might have to cross over a little bit to widen the road. But that's not conveying it. That's still your you, land. No, but you're conveying it the use. Like if you had to add an extra lane there or something. I'm just trying to make sure that we're... Well, you're still not... This is about... I'm looking... I'm being very yeah. anal about this because once it's done, it's done. So I'm just thinking, you know, like I said, we've got one way in, one way out. And if we... We already see you can pull up the conservation thing... We already know that that little tiny area there is not environmentally sensitive. So I'm just making sure that nothing would stop us if we needed to widen that road. or So that language doesn't do that. The word convey. You're, when you say widen that road, mm -hmm. you're talking about the, the road yeah, the little that road comes going to in. the to yeah. parallel to this white line. Right. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that would be restricted is if you went to transfer that part, something what is that, south? That's not below that yellow line to someone south. else. Right. That's south, right. yeah. Right. Okay, all right. If you were to sell that... I wasn't sure if it meant use, like convey use, no, you no. know, like if no, we no, needed it's... to expand that road again no. so that you get two cars, whatever, that it wasn't going to... We weren't going to... Municipally owned real property. This is talking about ownership. This is talking gotcha. about who owns it and who okay. has control yeah, over it. Yeah. Sure. But even if we decided to put it to referendum to sell this property... For a vote of the people, we we're not allowed to do that, are we? By all the contracts that we put ourselves. No, in? you've no. you've, I mean, you've we can't do that anyway. No, so I'm just I was just trying. I'm not worried about that. I okay. was worried about the word convey. It could be not just convey the land. It could be convey the use. No, it's it's. So it's I wanted to make sure I was clear on what the word convey means. All meant. talking about conveying an in, an ownership or property interest in the land. Gotcha. And that's where your charter. Sorry, I don't mean to take us down a rabbit hole, but it. But this I, is an important time to this have. This is all the your time to knock that there. out and. Mm -hmm. As the week has gone on, I've thought of more questions. Okay. Uh, and Commissioner Freeney's right. That would be another, it's a web of untangling on top of your charter restrictions. That's why right. I say this is really kind of the, the, the belt and the suspenders. Okay. Yes. All right. I, I think I'm Same good. Same time. I just needed, I, you, as soon as you said convey, I was like, hmm. This is the time to ask all those questions. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. This is a uh, public um, hearing anybody wishing to come forward and speak to can everybody speak to all three or do they have to just speak to the annexation come forward and speak to all three anyone who wants give us to your name and address for the record hello three, miss michelle we're gonna how you doing i'm good uh, michelle birnbaum 330 promenade dunedin i just wanted to see your faces and to once again thank you for everything you've done to make the preservation of this very rare and special place happen. Um, I guess my one thing that I come to realize is we have an animal living here at the Gladys Douglas, the gopher tortoise. 
And we have several animals living it. Well, he says there's there are many there are many animals, but there's a special one, the gopher tortoise. <laughs> and as you know, they're a threatened species here in Florida. And the reason that they're threatened is that their habitats and environments are being destroyed. Um, and every time someone develops an area where there's an established population, we lose that habitat. And um, I'd like to thank you all for doing the real conservation that's necessary to help this wonderful species continue. Um, so, bravo. Um, my, I guess the only concern I have, um, I know that there are gopher tortoises burrows outside that main conservation area. Mm -hmm. And I worry about all the torties. And we want to make sure they remain safe and that that also remains part of their home. So, and, and I think we're going to do, or, well, I know we're doing a plant study, but I also, aren't we doing um, at some Habitat. point a, like a, Account. an accounting of an it official, all? An official, official yeah, like uh, a survey. And, yeah, an environmental survey, let's right, call it, or right, something. And then right. those areas would be roped off, because I think there are laws about there are moving and, like, you can't do well, certain things. Well, the, the problem with gopher tortoises and the laws allow you to basically pay a fee and make them go away. Yeah, well, we're not going to do that. Right. And I just want to let you guys know that I know they're there, and we'd like to try to rehabilitate the environment in those areas, too, to make it more conducive for them and to encourage um, the natural vegetation that grows in those special conditions. And I think over time we can do that and really make it even more special. So I don't want to take any more of your time up, but I'd like to thank you for all your hard work. We really appreciate it. And I'm it. sorry what's happening in Tarpon. It breaks my heart. It really does. And it makes me realize how grateful I am to have all of you um, working with us to make preservation happen. Thank you very much. And thank you for all your help too, Michelle. Really, thank yes, you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. All right, come on down, girlfriend. Good evening. A resident biologist. Yeah. Yep. Um, Nicole Matthews, 1655 Narnia Court, Sydney, Florida. Um, I come to you this evening, you know, over, Gosh, it's been longer than a year since um, you know this really started coming to our attention about the Douglas property, or at least on the public forefront. Um, and I just definitely want to echo what everyone's been saying about this commission and staff and everyone in the city of Dean. Thank you um, for your environmental stewardship and leadership. Um, as we just mentioned a moment ago, there are other cities in the county and in Florida in general that that are not doing that. Um, and there's not that much green space left, and we need to be able to preserve as much as we can. So thank you for that dedication. Um, and I certainly look forward to working with you further about you know any more preservation areas in Dunedin and setting up those quarters for the wildlife that we do have here um, so they can move around and, and you know not have any negative interactions with our other locals here in Dunedin. Um, and I also want to thank you for writing a support letter for the Ready for 100 campaign. Um, as a member of Sierra Club, that is, that's an amazing campaign. Um, and definitely moving forward with our energy efficiency in the county will be just as important. Um, so thank you very much. And I look forward to hearing more about this and certainly more about the addition, hopefully, of the Jerry Lake property as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to come forward? Okay, um, so I will come and we can do all the final comments now. I'll come back to the commission, Commissioner Franey, final comments. Yeah, I mean, well, first I'll just say we talked a little bit about mentorship tonight. And then we'll do three separate votes. Oh, okay, yep. gotcha. Um, I was getting confused. Commissioner Kynes talked about Bibi and Grant being a mentor, so two of my heroes and mentors were John Lawrence and John Hubbard. And, uh, of course, uh, as a young staffer, they drilled it into me that there are no uh, more important decisions you make than green space. And um, no one ever looks back and thinks that you made a mistake or were an idiot for preserving green space. Um, there is no doubt in my mind, I'm 100% confident, that this is and will be the greatest achievement of this commission. Um, 
And what makes it even more special, and I'll look out for you guys, Nicole, Michelle, is that it was so community-based. And um, uh, I think even at the state level, I mean, we were just, they couldn't believe it. And um, just the amount of not only um, support, but financial support, emotional and financial support. But I just couldn't be more proud to be on this commission. I couldn't be more proud to be uh, part of this community. This is what makes Dunedin special because this stuff matters. And I'll tell you what, when you look at the things that um, that people really love about this place, it's because we haven't blocked off all the waterways and we have preserved green and we do care about the tortoises. I mean, those are what make us what we are and we are a really, really unique and special place. So I fully support this and I'm excited about it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Kranz. You know, John Hubbard, actually, he, he did so much. He left so many imprints on, on uh, preserving our green space and how important it was that we had parks in a very urban area, and it's becoming more and more urban every day, and yet we have these beautiful parks, and the GDP is just extraordinary. I mean, so I'm proud of all of y'all. I mean, I'm Jennifer and Nikki and all of y'all that... And y'all, everybody that got behind this and worked so hard, and I mean, it was it was a feat of passion. Because who would have ever thought? I mean, if you think about it, it was a feat of passion. And I, if you ask me what Dunedin's all about, Dunedin's all about passion. And there's your uh, branding. Where's, uh, where's uh, <laughs> Sue? Ooh. There's your branding. Dunedin is all about passion, and that's what make it, makes it such a very uh, almost idyllic uh, place because of the uh, feeling, so the ambiance. So I'm just like y'all. It, it, it's really it's extraordinary that, that we could all be together here and be able to make such a far-reaching decision this will is just generations upon generations and it just it's amazing it's a feat of passion john hubbard is smiling yeah and now we got oh, john yeah. and we got oh, vivian he's and, a jig. <laughs> and he's smiling yeah. he's doing cartwheels and he's probably drinking his bacardi or not yeah. his bacardi but his <laughs> that fancy romy drink and yeah. yes commissioner Torn. Thank you. I can, uh, I'm going to make this short because I'm going to go right along with y'all. Great comments. Starting with John Hubbard and what he did and his commitment to the community here and how it's just continued on from all of us. But I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to just go right along with you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Turner. Vice Mayor Gavin. Uh, thank you. Mayor, you know, it's been just been nice listening to all the comments and just staring at, at uh, what's on the screen and the fact that it's not even showing two parcels, it's showing one. And I just think that's kind of wonderful. We've talked about m mentors and, and you know, we just had the first part of this uh, commission meeting tonight was about the, the church and the history and the leaders that, that, that came through there. And, and, and the leadership wasn't just leaders in their own right, but leaders within the community. And that we just see that on and on and on and on with with the leaders and the people who are really passionate. Um, uh, we've talked about John Hubbard, uh, Vivian Grant. Uh, you know, I was able to sit with her on Friends in the Hammock, and she would pass around pictures of her as a as a young child uh, in Hammock Park, and it was neat to see uh, the, where she was. Those photo spots are still the same photo spots; they're mm -hmm. still there. And it's just wonderful. Uh, the the can fact. I, can I just say? And she used to do the minutes <clears throat> for the Hammock Park Advisory. They're from oh old typewriter. Oh, it's so just... funny. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and she. I pass... remember seeing them going back and looking for something, and there they would be with those that crazy <laughs> yep. typewriters. That's so she funny. Was, yeah. And she would pass those pictures around, but nobody left that meeting until she got every picture back. <laughs> she was. She had no problem calling you out in the middle of a meeting. You know, if if she really want, felt like she needed to tell you something, she would type up a letter and then she would pull screech into the drive and she would put it in your mailbox and I said you know I think that might be a federal law Vivian I, I mean we might all go to jail and she goes nope I, that's where it's going and I'm putting it there and then she 
<laughs> Reach That's off. So funny. Yeah. That's so funny. And uh, you know, and and I am for the thousandth thousandth time. Uh, just going to mention my dad and what he did for Hammock Park. Uh, and just his name was Jerry Gow, and I always call him Dad, but I think his name needs to be said. Uh, and the fact that what he did for Hammock Park, out of concern in the early 60s about overdevelopment in our communities. And, and the, the fact that you can see overdevelopment that far back, and, and how that resulted in 2016, and, and the concern over Our Lady Lord selling their property, and everybody didn't even know it was church property. They thought it was part of the Hammock and just the, the blow up there and just you can just see just through history the passion about about nature and um yeah and, and it is all about loving nature and, and nature is important uh but it's also uh, the environment is our economy and it is we need to embrace the nature and not just take it for granted and think that whatever we lose in development can be made up somewhere else and so this is such an opportunity uh, for us to, to go ahead. This is just, we've already done the deed. So this is just a continuing of that process. And so I am, I'm just proud that I have been a part of this. I'm proud of this commission. I'm proud of the community. I'm proud of the residents that stand up and know when to say uh, stop and we need to save this. And uh, thank you, Mayor, for bringing up Tarpon Springs because mm -hmm. it does break my heart. Uh, but that fight isn't over. Uh, so fight the good fight. You fight the fight that needs fighting, not the fight you can win. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, we've all, you know, thanked folks, and certainly the, I don't know, what did we have, like a 1,000 donors? Mm -hmm. Something yes. like that, right? Mm -hmm. Over a 1,000. Over a 1,000 donors, <clears throat> both big and small. So I won't get into naming them all. Um, activists, you know, including the Sierra Club, but, but you all and, and other organizations. Again, I, I don't want to name them all because I'll miss one and insult somebody. We need our cheat sheet. I know you've got it. She's got that cheat sheet. Uh, um, but you know, I want to thank Gladys Douglas. Absolutely. Mm. I want to thank Gladys Douglas um, for her foresight. It might have been a rocky road of how we got there, but she always wanted this property preserved. Everybody knew it or came to know it in some way or another that she wanted that. And I want to thank the Hackworth family because her husband, her second husband, obviously her first husband was Mr. Douglas, um, and his son kept the fight going to ensure that her true wishes were um, realized. And really, um, that's what got the ball rolling. And so I want a special shout out. Of course, I called Bob last week or the week before and told him that this night was coming with the, you know, the changing of the zoning. And he was here when we voted that charter change that we would have to go to referendum before we sell public land to, and, and Commissioner Scales was the one that brought that forward to protect Parkland. So it's just, and he was a part of voting on that. And here, by, by the step we're taking tonight and the next, the second reading, that's gonna get implemented too, even if that wasn't there, you know, on the, and so. Um, and Weaver, I mean. Yeah, Weaver. We, he was. He was instrumental in preserving Weaver. Uh, I'm glad you brought Bob up because, yeah. really, he's dogged. He doesn't care who he offends no. in the fight for green space. We <laughs> all know that. But I'll tell you what. Yeah. He, he's, he was but successful. But he made it happen. Yeah. He makes he it happen. He got the momentum going. Yeah, mm -hmm. he sure did. Um, and obviously, I want to thank the county. Absolutely. That was a long road going down with the county. Um, and I know each one of us... Um, you know, did our own lobbying, if you will. Jennifer, Nikki, you had your own people you were talking to. I know Bob and I gave a number of tours to the elected officials at the county and some staff people. Um, that was a long road that I don't think any of us thought was ever gonna move, and it did. 
but it moved because of the sheer number of people donating and showing passion, not just social media posts. It was people were putting their money where their mouth is, and they saw that. That's what made them go along with it. And then, of course, I can't forget to thank our rock star city manager and our rock star city attorney who, um, you know, it's why she got the Bright Star Award or whatever the heck we call Bright that Sparks thing. Bright Sparks Award. Sorry. <laughs> it should, you know, because, you. because, you know, while we were all dealing with the elected side and the public side, you were trying to convince a county administrator and his team on, uh, you know, of over a million people that this was worth their penny money to put towards this. And you were trying to convince many different lawyers, FCT grant money, you know, and, 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 and of course the, the uh, I want to say this very carefully, the estate's attorney, you had to deal with that. So... And of course, Mayor Vinsky's he was in on those. Yes, Vince was. And Vince, yes, Vince, of course. We are not forgetting you, darling. <laughs> and so, you know, just there's a lot of people, and that really isn't the purpose. We we said so many thank yous at our at yeah. our signing, you know, our ceremonial signing. So, um, but this just sort of puts that final piece. Um, I want to give Jennifer and Nikki a chance to say something, and when when we're done, me going through all the different votes, maybe you can give us a little update on the other things that we're going to do. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But I'm sure you guys have comments too, so go for it. Oh, I I just uh, I'm honestly just thankful for this. This has been a great opportunity, a great year. It seems, you know, it's hard. Like you all are saying, the list of people who to thank. Um, it there's there's too there's too many to say it's a group and a community effort is exactly what it what it is um both internally with staff even i mean tonight joey and george taking the torch to make sure all of your agreements that you agreed to are carried out and executed as you instructed and that within a year here you know earlier than that here we are annexing making good on all the promises that you made in those agreements that's really what makes my job amazing even though um you know i'm just one piece of it so i'm happy to serve now so, now you birthday girl <laughs> <laughs> well I, I it's a rock star city commission all five of you really to, to take this step to acquire this property um 44 acres of of passive open space is is just an amazing gift to the future generations, future city commissions. It, it, it truly is. And I'm just so proud of this commission um, and just completely honored that I was able to sit in this seat while you were doing it, truly. The, um, I was really waiting for this point to the annexation when it comes into the city. You know, through all, all those, those trials and tribulations, in the back of my mind, it was like, but this is unincorporated Pinellas County. You know, it's not in our city. So, um, uh, but it will be, and it will be uh, before we know it. Um, so I, I'm just, just like I said, the, the annexation for me was really the, the icing on the cake, so to speak, um, when, when we welcomed 44 acres uh, into, into our city. And there's, there's lots more to do, you know, there, there truly is. Um, I, I, you know, I remember we did the, um, the um, one fundraiser at Woodwright, I think yeah. it was, and we showed that video. Yeah, and I really want to work with uh, Michelle and Nicole, uh, work with Sue Burness, our new directors, director of communications, too, and I've mentioned this to all of you before, to really expand on that video, memorialize this effort, and, and send it out there, you know, in, in the airways. And for right. awards, we should mm -hmm. be bringing attention to Oh my gosh, to absolutely. We should be bringing attention to the region. Right, exactly, because... We ought to get future of the state, future of the region. We should send it, send it to Tarpon Springs. We should send it to Tarpon yeah. Springs. That's exactly yeah. what we should do. <laughs> we, could send, we could send what's there now to Tarpon Springs, because, I mean, I know that's a timely situation. 
you can get it from Sue and you guys can send it with our blessing. <laughs> Sorry. That, that's quite all right. So I think that yeah, there's... Yeah, no, that, that would be great. Right. I, I really think that, and it's a great video, and, um, and we need to tell this story. We genuinely do in all of our professional organizations. And, his, and you know... Maybe Vinny can help us with the history side of it, you know, because it should be, you know, we are always talking about, and I know Bob used to always talk about the preservation of Honeymoon Island, the preservation of Kalidisi, yep. you know, and uh, Jerry Rem, former mayor of Jerry Rem, and, you know, and he has that all in his head. I know it happened, I know the players, but I couldn't tell you the story. And so over time, those things. So it would be nice to have something, mm -hmm. you know, with a story. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. and so that the story is told the way we want it told. You mean all of our green space story? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Or? No, the, the GDP story. Oh, yeah, no, totally. But, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't I mean, be bad to memorialize our whole green space story. Well, no, yeah, that that's true. That story. too. But I mean, yeah. I, just think, I just think having having the story as in real time. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, I think what you're both talking about is that the historic precedent. Yeah. There was a historic precedent to save to save Hammock and Weaver and Not Honeyman well and Caladesi yeah. and I mean that passion has been forever for in the people up here. So well, and I, I think that I think the way that we did it too is worth is white paper worthy mm -hmm. of sending around, to, you know, to different municipalities all over the country. Right. This is how you do it. Right. You know? And so having that story. But anyway, I didn't mean to put you on the spot either, Jennifer, right. about giving us an update. Maybe maybe it would be better for you to think about it since I didn't give you since I didn't give you a warning and when we do the second rating, maybe you can just give us an update then. I would be prepared to do that. I did ask Vince to stay over a little bit if you want to, to a quick update, but that's fine. We can give you an update at Why don't we do that? I, okay, that's fine. That way you can put a little more thought in it. And then a final thank you is to the Parks and Rec Department. Mm -hmm. um, Vince and his team, of course, um, Craig. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, he did so many tours out there too. And the man knows his plants. You know, you think he's just a tree guy? Oh no, oh no. He's like a resident biologist too. I mean, he's not, but I mean, it's incredible. And and all the potential donors that came out and toured just loved that guy. I mean, they, they were just all over him asking questions and um, and just all the team, you know, the cleanup crew, managing the cleanup process, um, understanding the steps with FCT. We got that FCT. That's on you, Vince. That's on you. That is your application that right there that you and your team put together. Of course, we haven't received the money yet, but. And the county partnered with us on right. the FCT as well, yes. Right. right. So I'm just saying, you know. And the community foundation. Yeah. I mean, you had a tr foundation. very strong, you know, three legged stool, mm -hmm. if you want. But that was. Uh, and us, us listening to that meeting while it was happening, you know, that was, cool. mm -hmm. that was we were all listening, you know, in, in panic. That was great. It was in pan. I was in panic mode the whole time, thinking, "Oh my God, some some jerk's gonna say, mm -hmm, you know." They didn't. They saw it for what it was. So, and that was based on your application and the wording of it, you know, and how you did that, how you, the presentation, that came with that application. So, thank you. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Uh, let's do a roll call vote on the annexation, which is what we have the motion for. Vice Mayor Gow. Aye. Commissioner Torngo. Aye. Commissioner Kynes. Aye. Commissioner Franey. Aye. Mayor Bajowski. Aye, and that motion passes unanimously. We don't have to do this a second time, right? A annexation part? That's annexation. That's first reading. So. Oh, we do have a second reading. Yes, you have second, oh, okay. two readings gotcha. of every ordinance. Okay. Yeah. No, well, that I, somehow I thought annexation was just one, but that's okay. That's all right. All right, so now we're going to do the first reading of Ordinance 2133, Land Use Plan Designations. Would you please read that by Title I? Ordinance number 21-33, an ordinance of the City of Dunedin, Florida, amending the City of Dunedin Land Use Plan as adopted by Ordinance 2001 on certain real property and following annexation located at Keene Road and 1900 Virginia Avenue, parcel numbers 36281500000230, 
0100 and 36281500000240100 with designated meets and bounds and totaling approximately 43.44 acres to assign recreation open space ROS and preservation P land use designation and providing for an effective date. This has been reading of ordinance 21-33 on first reading by title only. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Vice Mayor, Commissioner Franey, thank you. Um, this, we did our public meeting already, so I don't have to open that again. Uh, no final questions, right? I can just go to straight you to the vote. straight to a roll call okay, vote. roll call vote, please. Commissioner Torngas? Aye. Commissioner Kynes? Aye. Commissioner Franey? Aye. Vice Mayor Gow? Aye. Mayor Brzezowski? Aye, and that motion passes unanimously. Then we have Ordinance 21-34 zoning designation, Nikki. Ordinance number 21-34, an ordinance of the City of Dunedin, Florida, zoning certain real property following annexation located at Keene Road and 1900 Virginia Avenue, parcel number 36281500000230010 and 36281500000240010 with designated meets and bounds and totaling approximately 43.44 acres to municipal public lands, MPL and providing for an effective date. This has been reading of ordinance 21-34 on first reading by title only. Okay, and can I have a motion to approve the zoning designation? So moved. Second. Commissioner Kynes and Commissioner Twornga. Got everybody in on it. Yeah, yeah. everybody. That's got great. Okay. All right, uh, no questions, no public input. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Franey? Aye. Vice Mayor Gow? Aye. Commissioner Twornga? Aye. Commissioner Kynes? Aye. Mayor Brzezowski? I am that motion passes unanimously. There is a second and final reading of all three of these ordinances by the City Commission, and that will occur after the future land use map amendment is approved by the Countywide Planning Authority, which is the County Commission. Uh, yes. Is that the County Commission? Yes, yes it is. Okay, yes, and is that, is that at a, well, I would assume it's, we should maybe take a little group of us when they talk about it. Sure. I think it would be a great opportunity. Yeah. It's a normal routine thing for them, yeah. but I think it's a great opportunity yeah. to tell a story and thank them again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they'll be so excited to see Dunedin in front of them. <laughs> they get scared. More they get scared. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, them that, tell them you're really there to, tell them you're there to tell them how good you're doing at following the interlocal agreement. Yeah. But I mean, it's just going to be nice. So uh, yeah, they're yeah. going to think we're there for more so money. So Joe, if you can, <laughs> no, no, Joseph, if you can find out when, and I, I know you guys can't tell us now, but when you find out when that's scheduled. Let the city manager know so she can let all of us know. We'll let you guys know. It would just be a nice, a secondary way just to say thank yeah, you and then. acknowledge their partnership. I had a question. Yes, Before the question, though, I was going to tell you, Nikki, that since we've talked history tonight, the fastest reader of ordinances by title oh, John was John Hubbard. Hubbard. So if you want to go back and get some tips on fast reading of it. Well, you know, he would have been right? on tape because <laughs> we started doing TV don't, don't tell in 2007. Oh my gosh, that guy was like the speed of lightning. And he was still up I, here, so I have to remind myself to slow down. So don't oh, yeah, I know oh, no. tempt me. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh no, <laughs> it was like a lightning speed. Yeah. Uh, I, the question was um, the thank you letters that we were going to do some type of special thank you letters from the foundation. Mm -hmm. Did that happen or? Because weren't we going to do like a combined signature thing? I don't know. There yeah. was a confidentiality thing, too, so I don't know. Right. It, it, there was. And so the Pinellas Community Foundation uh, really was concerned about the confidentiality piece of that, so we did the big sign waving. That was the yeah. thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. but because anything, if well, your name what, is on it, it becomes But are they a doing thank you letters, or did they do I don't thank you think so. What we were worried about, they specifically I remember you. now, is, is that they would have to they submit the labels to us to send it out, and that's public record. Yeah. But did they do thank you letters? I don't know, actually. Okay. I'm pretty check. sure they did, but it wouldn't have been with our Maybe name. Right. Did. did you get something? Yeah, so we, um, we Michelle and I, Kira and I, we were working on thank you letters based on the donor list that PCF had given us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the majority of them were done, but we only did like the first 100. So um, just because. <laughs> yeah, there were so many. I'm pretty sure the community, well, you'll be talking to Doug. Yeah, just, yeah. just make yeah. sure. I'm sure they did something, but if we put our signature on it, then it becomes public record automatically. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I, so I know that piece. we wouldn't I have been able to do it. I didn't recall getting anything, so I'm just wondering. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. No, I got something. I don't recall. 
I got, well, I got an email. It was a thank you email after I did the do because I did the donation. Yeah, no, online. there's an there was an immediate email. I just thought there was going to be something more. Okay, that's fine. Remember okay, it? all right. If we're going to have our extracurriculars, we got to get through this agenda. Hmm. We're done. Thank you. You you can stick around, but I'm just, I'm giving you permission. You can go ahead and go if you want to. Run, run. Meet us down, meet us at the corner. <laughs> Uh, okay, now we have the second reading of Ordinance 2131, Historical Landmark Designate. Oh, no, we already did that one. Sorry, I had to jump. Uh, second reading of Ordinance 2136, Historical Landmark Designation for 706 Wood Street. Uh, Nikki, would you please read that by title only? Ordinance number 21-36, an ordinance of the city of Dunedin, Florida, <laughs> designating the home located at 706 Wood Street as a historic landmark, and providing for an effective date. This is reading of Ordinance 21-36. Make you paranoid now, right? Okay, yeah. I got Commissioner Kynes as the maker. Who's going to be my seconder? Second. Okay, Commissioner Tornga. And you're going to go quick, right? Very quick. Very quick. Very quick. Molly Cord on behalf of Community Development. Uh, the applicant and owner, Joan Morrow, is seeking to place a historic landmark designation at 706 Wood Street. This is the aerial vicinity. Uh, the structure was built in the early 1920s by Mr. and Mrs. William Neely, uh, originally a member of the Dunedin's Chamber of Commerce, Zoning Committee, and City Commission. Neely would said, sell the home in 1927 to Dr. Jack Meese. Uh, so you guys already know all about that. Um, the structure has a uh, original fascia and a unique front-facing gable, as you can see from the south elevation. Uh, roof line is a traditional false thatched roof with natural texturing. Uh, characteristic of the Tudor architectural style. Uh, current owner Joan Morrow would like to designate this property as a historic landmark to not only preserve the revival of Tudor architecture but to celebrate the history of the home's previous residents and that supported the community of Dunedin. Staff and HPAC find the request consistent uh, with the applicable review criteria and therefore staff's recommendation is to approve Ordinance 21-36. There you go. Okay. And, all right, any questions for Molly? No, okay, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak to this item? Okay, seeing none, final comments? Uh, you said that they're not here. Uh, well, I was gonna say, um, Joni could not be here tonight, and maybe Vinny as the uh, HPAC uh, chairman, would you like to come up to accept this for Joni, and I will get it to her. Okay. Step forward. Again, Vinnie Luisi, chairperson of the Historic Preservation. Again, I'd like to thank my committee. Again, once again, uh, we are building up a large group of homes to save in the community of Dunedin for their history and cultural heritage. And once again, we're very proud that this one fits the format of what we were looking for, and we're very proud to present the family with that. Uh, they could not be here tonight, so Deborah and, and the committee will make sure that they get the plaque, and we just want to thank them. Again, when uh, COVID is out of the way again it's been four years but all these homes we look forward to having on our historic house store when we go back in the summertime so you make thank you, you take a, make sure you take a selfie with Joni when you deliver it to her I will I will definitely do the ceremonial pass off yep yep so um, here Vinny you can accept for Joni okay. and then um, I will take it to her okay thank you yeah, and um, you just leave it every time I see Molly come up, I, I always want to say, good golly, Miss Molly, you know, from the old. <laughs> I haven't heard that at all. <laughs> but, no, never. No, never. But, just but, like uh, Leslie over there. Yeah, Leslie. <laughs> but, um, you know, this never is. Never going to forget that one. This is a beautiful home. I'm and sorry, Leslie. And Molly has become very adept at really trying to, like what she pulled up tonight for the first press. I mean, that was amazing. I just love her energy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Give us some. Give us some. I do, too. Thank so you. do George and Joey. I can Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Yeah. Thank you. She's like their boost of uh, caffeine. There you yeah. go. Okay. Uh, did we? Did we? We opened it. We closed. Okay. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Torn, any final comments? Very interesting history. Beautiful house. Beautiful yes. house. Okay. Anybody else? Love the gable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome program, awesome house, so thank you. Yeah. 
Cool. Once again, Commissioner Kynes. Yes. Um, okay, roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Gow. Aye. Commissioner Frame. Aye. Commissioner Tornga. Aye. Commissioner Kynes. Aye. Mayor Pajowski. Aye, that motion passes unanimously. Deborah will take care of Joni. Thank you very much, Molly, for your hard work. Yep. Thank okay. you. Okay. And uh, now we have the non ad valorem revenue note series resolution 21 27. Nikki, would you please read that resolution by title only? Yes. <laughs> resolution number 21 27, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Dunedin, Florida, authorizing the issuance of a not to exceed $4.2 million City of Dunedin, Florida non ad valorem revenue note series 2021 B to finance and or reimburse the costs of the acquisition of certain real property located within the geographic limits of the City of Dunedin Community Redevelopment Agency in the city to be used for parking and improvements related thereto, and to pay associated transactional costs, providing that such note shall be a limited obligation of the city payable solely from non ad valorem revenues budgeted, appropriated, and deposited as provided herein, providing for the rights, securities, and remedies for the owner of such note, approving the form and authorizing the execution of an interlocal agreement between the city and the city of Dunedin Community Redevelopment Agency, making certain covenants and agreements in connection therewith and providing for an effective date. This has been reading of resolution 21-27 by title only. Okay. Move who's, approval. I was just gonna say, who's gonna fight to do this motion? <laughs> <laughs> who's my seconder? Second. Second. Okay, I'm gonna Whatever. give it to Vice Mayor Gow. All right. Leslie. Okay, good oh. morning. <laughs> That's Good morning, morning Mayor, away. Vice Mayor, Commissioners. I was going to uh, call you Lester. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and then I remembered, oh, no, it's Leslie. You know, it could have been Lester or Leslie. I like Leslie better than Lester, actually. Okay, there you go. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, uh, Les Tyler, the finance director. Uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> this item is Resolution 2127 for a non-Avalarium Revenue Note Series 21-2021B for the purchase of real property located at 362 Scotland Street in Dunedin to be used for parking. Uh, I want to mention we have some key members of the finance team with us today. We have uh, Joe Tyndall on Zoom. He's our financial advisor with Hilltop Securities. And we also have Dwayne Draper uh, still on Zoom. And I also want to mention that uh, our city attorney, Nikki Day, is also a key member of our finance team. I would like to briefly go over some brief background on this uh, note. Uh, the financing plan for the purchase of the said property is a tax-exempt bank loan secured by the city's covenant to budget and appropriate for non-ad valorem revenues for repayment. The purchase of the property is, uh, the, the purchase of the property and the debt service for the property is included in the fiscal year 2022 CRA budget. The inter an interlocal agreement between the city and the CRA will memorialize the terms by which the CRA will reimburse the city for its obligations incurred by the financing by paying the city each year <coughs> the annual amount due for the debt service uh, with, for principal and interest uh, for the CRA, CRA parking lot purchase. The city issued RFP 21-1191 on September 17, 2021 for bank loan pr uh, proposals in an amount not to exceed $4.2 million to be repaid over approximately 11 years for the purpose of obtaining tax exempt uh, bank loan financing. The intent of the RFP was to select the bank fi uh, financing that provides the lowest overall borrowing cost to the city and meets the financing requirements of the city. The proceeds of the loan will be used to finance or reimburse costs for the acquisition of real property located within the geographic limits of the City of Dunedin CRA agency to be used for parking and improvements. The City received seven proposals with our RFP that were deemed responsive by the October 7, 2021 deadline. An evaluation committee was formed to discuss the proposals and the, the evaluation committee ranked Sterling National Bank the highest and best proposal. Staff has performed due diligence working with our uh, city attorney and bond counsel with Bryant uh, Miller Olive and our financial advisor to verify that the terms and conditions of the loan are acceptable to the city. Surely National Bank proposal provides a fixed interest rate of 1.515%. The loan will have a final maturity date of August 1st, 2032, or approximately 11 years. The loan provides flexibility to prepay on an interest uh, payment date beginning August 1st, 2024, with a 1% penalty, and then to prepay on an interest payment date uh, on or after August 1st, 2025, with no penalty. So basically, at four years, we have no penalty, and at three years, we have a 1% penalty, uh, prepayment penalty. Uh, 
Some key financing information mentioned in the staffing report and on page, uh, the last page in the staffing report include the total debt service over the life of the loan is uh, $4.5 million, that's principal and interest, and the annual debt service is $415,000. I also want to mention that our city has a, a, a debt policy that you're all familiar with, and one of the requirements in our debt policy is, is that we, that our total annual debt service uh, is over our total governmental revenues ratio. That calculation uh, shall not exceed more than 20%, 20% or more. With this bank loan included in that calculation, that the ratio is 15.9%, so we're well, well below our 20%. I wanted to point that out. Um, and also, the proposed resolution 2127 attached is in Exhibit C of the staffing report. And I'd like to turn it briefly over to, to Dwayne Draper to cover a few key points in the resolution. Welcome, Very good. <clears throat> yes, good evening. I'm uh, Dwayne Draper here at Bryant Miller and Olive, and we've been privileged to be your bond council uh, dating back to the 1990s mm -hmm. to uh, stay on the theme of uh, history, and we don't take that for granted. And just wanted to briefly su uh, supplement Nikki Day and Les Tyler on uh, the resolution number 21-27 without repeating anything. The, the resolution does impose the same anti-dilution test, which is a borrowing limit that the city is already subject to on other debt of at least 1.5 times. And then if all goes expected, uh, and this uh, is adopted tonight, the anticipated closing date of this loan and the related real estate transaction is anticipated to be November 18th, 2021. So we plan to meet with, with you, Mayor, the city manager, the clerk, the finance director, and the city attorney for less than 30 minutes to execute all the documentation at City Hall following the morning city commission work session on November 16th. And I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you. That was what I was going to ask because it said proposed closing around the 18th, and that's a Thursday, and I was just going to say I'm gone the, all the next week. So if something happens... We've scheduled, it's on your calendar already for the 16th of kind of a pre-signing. Right, yes. That's right. mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. what this is. Right. That's yeah. the same. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. We're yeah. streamlining everything, Mayor, to happen at the same time. So the real estate, the financing will all be pre-closed on the same date, same time. So even if he delays something, the owner, the current owner, or something delays or whatever, if I'm not here, you're still okay. We'll be, yeah, we'll, we'll, we have, um, I am going to be in Tampa, so I mean, we yeah, can figure it out somehow, but it would be very awkward. Yeah, I we have the, we have the vice mayor authorized in, in your absence. Okay, there Thank you go. You. That's what I just want to make sure, but I just, <clears throat> because, you know, th these things can run late. Yeah. I got you, girl. No, that's a good Thank one. you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for that kind of night. It is. It is. Okay. All right. Any other questions for, uh, for Dwayne or for Lux? Nope. Okay. Um, has this gone? Never mind. No. I already I already know the answer to that. Never mind. It hasn't. The this it hasn't, but the desire to have the parking did in our budget. Yes. I just wanted to make sure. Yes. But th now I remember. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, gentlemen. This is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak to this item, please feel free to do so. I don't see a single person from the public other than our wonderful sheriff deputy. <laughs> um, I think he's going to speak to it. And he just wants to get out of here. That's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Any final comments? <laughs> no. I love the fact that we are still so far under our debt ratio. Um, and considering we've got City Hall. We've got the stadium and player development and all, all, all the other things that we've done, and we're still, so that's good news. Okay, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Kynes? Aye. Commissioner Torenga? Aye. Vice Mayor Gow? Aye. Commissioner Franey? Aye. Mayor Brzezowski? Aye. That motion passes unanimously that there's no second reading on that, right, because it's a resolution. That is a resolution. <coughs> all righty. Yep. We will go forth and, and yeah. move forward with our closings. Bye, Dwayne. Dwayne, Joel, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank Bye, you. Joel. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now we have the uh, city clerk's annual performance eval. <laughs> Teresa.
Thanks, Liz. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commission. Teresa Smalling, Director of HR and Risk Management for the City. As a charter official, uh, City Clerk Rebecca Schlichter receives an annual evaluation by the Commission. You all received uh, the form and the, a memo um, recommending that you uh, meet with uh, City Clerk Schlichter and uh, go over her performance. And um, there, was a, there is a compiled form uh, to assist you with uh, reviewing the overall results. So at this time, unless you have questions for me, I um, recommend that you discuss the compiled form. Okay. Um, so everybody's had an opportunity to uh, review the compiled form. Um, so I'm just going <coughs> to start with Vice Mayor, and you can give your comments when we... There's two functions we need to do, and that's approve a, a, a raise at the suggestion that we already see on our paper, um, or what that should be, and then um, the, the acceptance of the goals for next year, which I think they're all pretty much the same. You know, there wasn't a lot of variation. Um, and then, of course, we'll give Rebecca a chance to, we might give her a chance to talk, but I'm going to start with you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, during this city clerk, uh, Re Rebecca, it's always hard because we only see you for a short part of, of actually what you do for your job. Uh, and then uh, a lot of it is, I don't know about innuendo, but it's always secondhand or by email or, or what have you. But uh, during the pandemic, you've just done a really hard and good job at managing all of our boards and committees and trying to keep them straight and with Zoom and and who's what and who's doing where, and then the, the continued education that you have done with them over and over again to make sure that they get the whole Sunshine Law um, down pat. And I know that I can only imagine that there's still education that needs to occur there. But just overall, you've been fabulous. Any interaction that you've had with me, any email or any concern that I've had, uh, you are on it ex crazy quick. Uh, even down to a recent question about the history of the church and um, finding out when when we righted the wrong, and you got that to me, and it was a matter of minutes. And I and I give you credit for that, but I also know that staff is involved in that Absolutely. <clears throat> it, it, as well. But uh, so thank you. I think you've just uh, done a great job. So thank you very much. It's a good year. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Commissioner Ray. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, I mean, I scored um, uh, Rebecca really well on everything. I mean, I think she's doing a great job. Um, I, I was going to chuckling say that it's good that you'll probably have a chance to speak because my experience is if you don't, it's because it doesn't go well. <laughs> and uh, I think it's going to go very well based on your scores. But I just have to say, um, you know, and I said this to Rebecca when we talked before this, you know, two years ago when we hired you, you know, I almost thought you might be too much of a stickler for detail. And, um, but, but you really have balanced that um, and your, your sense of detail with your strength of purpose, your integrity, and just knowing how to balance all those things has, has been superb. Um, I, um, you know, I always say up here, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly city mm -hmm. managers. Well, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in city clerks. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm just going to say right now, you're the best one I've ever worked with. Um, you're doing an awesome job. Um, I, I'm going to read my final comments. Rebecca's doing a great job as the Needham City Clerk. As I stated before, she's hardworking, diligent, ethical, very ethical, cares about the city, her staff, and the job she does. She's detail-oriented and always strives to improve processes. She's strong but flexible, and I think you show that again and again where you know, again, it's that balance between what's really important, having some balance with boards and committee requests, things like that, but also, you know, when you have to stay strong, you stay strong, and that's a really important characteristic. Um, also works well as part of the larger team of charter officials, department heads, and city staff. My experience with other city clerks, not all of them, that's usually where it falls off, um, that relationship, because you're a charter official and you, you're kind of still... You know, you want to have a great relationship with the department heads. You want to have a great relationship with the other charter officials. Sometimes that falls off. Uh, but not with you. I think that uh, you that's a real strength for you. Um, 
you are fair and conscientious. And uh, my final statement, the city's really lucky to have you, Rebecca. And, um, and I can't say that enough. I think that, um, I, I said this last year, I think on, the, on the, the evaluation that I felt like maybe we hit a home run and I, and I feel more so than ever that we hit a home run. So appreciate all your work. Um, you know, uh, Rebecca, I think I, I've often thought about this. I think your military background, I think it's a really extraordinary touch touchstone for your attention to detail and how you, you know, look at an issue and then you go and you attack the issue. I mean, I've really thought about that, that your background has really given you uh, a really wonderful and an excellent um, background for this kind of work. Um, you know, the boards and committees, just the, I mean, it, it's huge. I mean, when you consider all the personalities and all the different issues and everything that you have to uh, deal with, with our boards and committees, I mean, I, I think you've shown a very good uh, sense of trying to get us organized and at the same time, uh, really trying to understand what their principal issues are. And so I really appreciate that. Um, so I gave you a very good uh, recommendation. And the only, the on can I, she usually yells at me. The only, the only. You can um, say whatever you want. Oh, it's your turn to talk. It's my turn to talk. I never heard that before. Um, you won't hear it very often either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. No. Um, no go ahead. The so only thing is I really think we need to work on, and Rebecca, I don't think this is your problem. I think it's all of our issues. And, and you know, when I talked to Jennifer, I said maybe we should do two, twice a year sunshine because sunshine is tricky. I mean, it's difficult. And it's when, when you're coming from outside the city, you know, on one of these boards, it's really difficult to understand all the ramifications of the legalities. I mean, it's hard for all of us. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder, you know, if maybe we, we might set up two sessions during a year. Uh, you, I mean, hey, this is not my bailiwick. So I, I know y'all will come up with some way that we can maybe sort of buttress this understanding or broaden our committee's understanding of sunshine. And you're working on training your liaisons as well, too, so well, they yeah. can keep an eye on things. And we do have that recording, and so maybe that's something not for a discussion tonight, but we could talk about in Resolution 1606 right. when we update it, mm -hmm. we, that we could ask that that's put on an agenda, mm -hmm. that they have to um, that they're required to do training. Exactly. The state told us we had to do ethics training. Yep. Yeah. So I'm, well, that's a, another but anyway, well, I, discussion. I just wanted to. Bring I was going to. I was going to give um, kudos to to Rebecca on that point too because she was the one that just that that asked if if I would be okay with being recorded. I thought it was a great idea because that this way they have a training video that can be watched as many times as anyone wants it they can watch it throughout the year you can watch it when there's new onboarding so i really think it's a great tool to be that can be used as frequently as as needed mm -hmm. and i think that's wonderful that you did that i'm just saying you know i don't know how i'm leaving it up to you because you all are the professionals i'm just bringing my concern mm -hmm. thank you commissioner Torngo. Thank you. I had a great uh, review with Rebecca, great conversation. Was, I had nothing negative, all, only positive. And uh, I think she's a qualified and quality um, city clerk. And, uh, and I appreciate what she has done. She's always reacted very quickly to anything that I had. I don't know the rest. Um, uh, I think that's in the part of that. I didn't make a comment about that at all. And, but I know for me, so the things that I've needed or, or, or requested or were involved in, she was on top of. So I appreciate that. As far as, um, as, far as the management of her people, she seems to really care about her people. I have not observed enough to, to really make a qualified um, review of that, and we discussed that, and that's, that's, so that's not negative uh, at all. And so uh, I'm, I'm very pleased. and. And I certainly told her that I was going to give a big yes for, for the salary increase. 
and look forward to talking with her in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, Rebecca and I talk quite a bit, um, you know, as part of our board rules and regulations. Um, because we're so removed from the city clerk's office, mm -hmm. at least the way it is now, is, you know, with a, whoever's in the mayor's position spends a lot of time talking to them, making sure they're okay and they have a person, you know. Um, I certainly don't make any decisions or anything, but it's a, it's a one voice kind of thing. So uh, we, we do talk a lot and I've gotten to know her very well. Um, ethical, professional, um, uses really good judgment, does not act quickly if she is unsure of something. Not that she doesn't act quickly, she does, but she gets her ducks in a row. Um, No complaints, none at all. Um, responsive, treats everybody fairly, treats everybody in the public fairly. You had a lot to cover this last year, closing out an election, and I mean, you know, Zoom, and oh all the work that you've been doing on boards and committees and trying to kind of clean up that whole process and the training that you've done with our staff liaisons and the continuation with that, working with Nikki and, um, Jennifer on the recommendations that are going to come to us in December, mm -hmm. you know uh, You know you've taken and you're going to be this coming year planning for a move <clears throat> You've got a lot going on and um, You seem to manage it well and I felt very good about my review. I scored her very highly um, and in a lot of places, I had a hard time differentiating between excellent and outstanding. I was, you know, I didn't want to just put all one. I wanted it to be thoughtful, but I really had a hard time, you know, and I'm generally, there's always usually at least one meets expectation somewhere for me, you know, and there wasn't. There wasn't. Um, so I, I feel very confident in your um, ability to lead your team. Um, I, I took some time to talk to other people that work with you and got their opinions so that I, because I'm not always in your office, I'm rarely in your office, I'm on the phone with you most of the time. That'll all change when we get our new city hall. Everybody will be seeing and working with each other a lot closer and being able to observe a lot of things. You won't be in your little hole. Over there. Don't um, scare that you'll be. Yeah, the score will definitely yeah. go down. Don't scare that you're going to be closer to it. No, not me. I meant department heads and that kind of thing. You know, I I know that, uh, you know, one of your concerns is again just trying to ensure that our agenda flow, that process with our new automated system, and then what happens from then on. We've, we've had the automated system long enough now, as you know, and we can see. And, you know, it's sometimes things are just going to be late because it is the nature of the beast of government. Um, and I know you're working very closely with Jennifer on those systems and processes. So I'm sure she would say the same thing. Your patience is, you know, appreciated as... as New people come in and try to figure things out, and then if our calendar changes all over the place, ha! <laughs> so your idea, you came up with an idea, I don't know if you shared it with everybody, but you had talked to one of your continuing education things or whatever, you had talked to other clerks who put out a, I don't know if it's an annual calendar, but a weekly reminder, or I don't know, I don't remember exactly what you told me, but quarterly. quarterly calendar of when things are due, mm -hmm. so that people have it right in front of their face and they're not always asking. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's going to change. Um, so you're always looking for ways to improve, and I really appreciate that. Um, I know that boards and committees, as 30 of them or whatever the number is, has been sort of the bane of your existence, and I know it's been a very slow, arduous process for you to kind of work through. I know we have probably 30 resolutions, binding resolutions for our, our committees, and every one of them is different. 
and I know that you're going to be working on making them consistent um, and, and a lot of other things. And I know that all of that takes time, and now you're down a person. So what I've been pretty impressed with is that you've, even with a person, you, you took the year to try to take things in chunks that worked with the resources you had on hand versus trying to bite off more than you can choose and then let something else suffer. Again, good judgment, good de leadership, good decision making. Um, so I appreciate all of that. Uh, the rest of my comments are written. Anybody can read them. Um, so what we have to do now is um, we need to make a motion about um, Rebecca's annual increase. We have five yeses that she gets an increase. Mm -hmm. So um, we know that employees are getting 3%, right? Yes. Okay. So um, does this go back to October 1st, or how does this work? Yes, it would be effective as of our hire date. Mm. Okay, is there a motion from somebody? I'll move uh, for a 3% raise for Rebecca. I'll second. Okay. So, Commissioner Franey and Commissioner Kynes, are there any comments on that? No. No? Okay. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, and then we have, uh, we have some um, goals for the next year besides the overall organization's goals and all of those things. I didn't see anything that stood out that was different than I think. I think everybody was almost saying the same thing, but does anybody have any concerns about any of the goals that are listed? I can go through them. Timely replacement of the deputy city clerk and cross-training. Completion of board and committee updated regulations, consistency and stuff carried over. Plan and execute a successful move to city hall. Execute a seamless 2022 election. Um, organize and execute any ordinances and charter review committee needs. Work with the city manager on the internal agenda item process. Continue to improve the policies and procedures of the city clerk's office. Um, continue to improve and enhance the city's records management system. Continue with professional education. Continue process of organizing boards and committees, um, vacancies. Um, Dunedin committees are still a big workload issue. Saying all the same thing. I think we could do a bit on the Sunshine Law training and then the continued monitoring development and improvement of administration of the boards and committees. So mm -hmm. I think that pretty much all says it all. Everybody okay with those? Yes. Yes, no, can I have them? Are you okay with those? I mean, does anything jump out that you don't understand? or No, or I mean, is it there's something that I've pretty much been doing since day one. I mean, I'm not, I'm, you know, there's nothing that stands out. I mean, we have an election next year. Um, again, you know, there was one, two years, you know, right after I started and whatnot. So, um, so no, I thank you, but I, it's all pretty. Okay, so can I have a motion and a second to approve those? So moved. Second. Okay. Okay, Commissioner um, Kynes and Commissioner Tornga, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, you want to say anything? Sure, I, I, I'd love to. Um, just to kind of echo what everybody else here is saying as far as, mm -hmm. as Rebecca's professionalism and, and uh, you know, her work ethics and, and those types of things. And, and um, I enjoy working with her a lot because she is so efficient, so proficient, enjoys her work, um, is committed to the city, is considered, uh, committed to the residents, to the employees. And by the way, she's no pushover. <laughs> she is no pushover. Oh, no, I've seen her say no before. It's not often, uh, but when it comes, it's like, oh, <laughs> where'd that come from? <laughs> exactly, so, I mean, just the whole team itself, uh, of the management team, and and Rebecca was really that, that, that you know, charter officer slot in place that that really kind of filled it out. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to next year and all the things that we're going to do. You know, the city clerk's office and human resources department are the two departments that are really struggling out under their relocation and their current office space. So 
I think that, that moving to the new city hall is definitely going to be a game changer for both of them. Um, and to get uh, you know, the city clerk right down the hallway again yeah. is going to help our, our, our certainly our, our business process a great deal. So, um, and she, she certainly deserves to have that type of an office space as, as efficient as it, as it is. So, Rebecca, I, I really love working with you. And um, I, I'm looking forward to all we're going to do. Thank you. Lots. <laughs> Nikki? I just want to say I really enjoy working with you as well. And Rebecca's always really responsive. Any time that I've needed to get caught up on historical documents or ordinances, her team is very prompt in getting me everything that, that I need to be able to um, give you all legal advice. So I really appreciate it. I couldn't do what I do without without her being so responsive and professional. So I really appreciate you, Rebecca, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Can continue working with you. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Your turn. Um, thank you. I mean, you know, it's not easy sitting and having people talk about, I mean, po yeah. luckily positively, but yeah. you know, it's still just not always comfortable. So um, thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, Jennifer and Nikki, I, tr it's truly appreciate it. Um, but I, you know, it's not me. The staff, come on, we all know Janice. She's, no, Janice is a rock star. Yes, Janice is. Janice well, makes everybody. Janice makes everybody look good. She's been just there since day one for me, and just has always um, supported me. And so I can't. But Catherine, my new admin, I mean, just. Just a breath of fresh air and just truly gr customer service that is your person she is just very wants to help probably you know the first face of your department yeah exactly so um so and you, i can't go without um david and bill my male clerks they're always out and about and um you know helping where they can in diff the different departments as well so i just those you know that's my team that's they are there for me every day and I couldn't do what I do and get every, keep everything moving without those, my staff. So I, I just need to put that out there. And, and just a quick note about, you know, even all the department heads, and I'm probably a thorn in their side <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a regular basis when it comes to agendas and things like that. Um, and I know, and I try to kind of wait until I have to be. Um, but, you know, they do work so hard to meet the deadlines, and I know that. I truly do. So it's just timing of things sometimes, you know, and making it work for our deadlines and for what they're waiting for. So I just appreciate all the department heads, not the, the, the couple here, um, because, Baby again, steps. but again. the department heads. Yeah. <laughs> Baby steps. But sometimes. Yeah. Um, but again, it still makes, they all help me do what I have to do. So again, just, just thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. And um, I love what I do. I'll be honest. I mean, that's just, it it's shows. just, it shows. not everybody wants to gr grow up and be a clerk. But, <laughs> 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 um, but it is just a uh, wonderful opportunity. I love Dunedin. I love the citizens. And I even, as much as I sometimes with the, the sheer numbers of the boards and committees, I can't argue with the passion. So, I mean, look at tonight, just even with the, you know, you have to, there's, so that just makes what you do just all that more enjoyable. So, thank you. Very Appreciate good. it. Okay, we did our votes. Thank you, <laughs> Teresa. Okay, this has got to be the most important thing. <laughs> the proposed agenda for November 18th yeah, has <laughs> absolutely nothing on it. Is there a, a, a Jennifer, can you? Motion to cancel meeting? No. Oh, my God. No, that, well, that's. <laughs> What we're gonna do? Oh, yeah. Are you still are you still okay with doing? The, well, yeah, we have to, or we have to advertise. So, you're you're okay with all of that? You feel like anything that we need can be added to the 16th or the following, the 30th? Yeah, the department director has met already. There are no additional items for that agenda, so we're good to go, and they're very well aware of that. Okay, so Commissioner Franey's made the motion. Well, Who, I second, I was, who's seconding? I'll second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Is this a Thanksgiving present? It is. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, so uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. No more November 18th meeting. Woohoo. 
Okay. Uh, we have a couple informational items, and we're going to try to go through those really quickly, if we can. Um, yes, because we have plans. Um, no. How could we make this go longer, though? I, thought I know. I thought we thought it was going to be really short and quick. That didn't happen. Um, just on my letter of support, and then I'll turn it over to Jennifer. Uh, spoke with Barry this morning at a meeting. He thinks it's going to pass, but mm -hmm. I told him that we, I, we were likely sending a letter of support. Okay. So he he knew he knew it was coming, and he's what he told me is, is he's already spent time finishing up other uh, analysis, so that by the time they got asked this question, they felt very comfortable about what was happening in certain departments. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's what he shared with me. Yeah, I talked to Commissioner Seal, yeah. and um, she seemed very positive that it was going in a good direction as well. So, But still, it's a good thing to... I think if we do a letter, it should be, you know, just our experience, which, which you know, typical questions are the cost, you know, and, you know... Letter's already done. Okay. Well, what did we say? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. I'd like to know <laughs> I, but I don't, think, I don't think it says that. Yeah. I think it was just whatever the Sierra Club had or whatever, maybe. Well, yeah, Natalie Gass actually drafted the letter. I anticipated that you all would support it. I wanted to catch the mayor before um, uh, she it. left. So they could get it out tomorrow. Right. And so the letter says essentially that the city of Dunedin supports Ready for 100, that you are uh, ready for 100, that we are ready for for uh, 100 city and kind of the, the benefits of environmental um, sustainability and, and ready for 100 in support of environmental sustainability. No, that's good. That's great. Perfect. I haven't I mean, even read it yet. I mean, I was going to read it before I signed it, but I mean, I idea. hadn't gotten to that point well, yet. Well, I'm always just sensitive to pressuring one public entity over the other, even though I think it's going a good way. So I just always, the wording, the no, nuance no. of the wording. We also thank them for their, their environmental initiatives to date as well. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Because that's they perfect. are that's doing perfect. some things. They're looking at their whole fleet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is a lot. Okay, so everybody is, a consensus, everybody? Everybody is okay? All right. So that letter will, I guess, go out tomorrow via email. Yes. Um, their meeting is on Tuesday. I know that a lot of people are asking supporters to go, if anybody wants to go. I haven't even checked my schedule for that Wait, day. Don't we have input sessions that day? Well? Yeah, we do. So okay. I know I, I we got we got crazy okay. days next week. We do. We have crazy days. Mr. So I'm just That's letting folks know that it is on their meeting, um, like yeah, a yeah, nine, is, I think it's a nine o'clock or a 930 oh. meeting, but I'll have to look. But it is Tuesday. Okay, so Jennifer, you had two items. I do. I have two items for you, Mayor and Commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is in regards to the overlay district, and that's why George is, is hanging out um, to answer any questions you might have. I had, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I did have a request uh, from, from one of your number, and uh, I, I confirmed one of, what? one of your number. Here and I confirmed oh, on one of on our the, commissioners. Yes, oh, I didn't one know of you guys. One of, number. Number. I didn't one know of you. What does that mean? Yeah. yeah, it's good English. Yeah, and I did. Um, I did mention it at the work we session that I would give you an overview. Oh, I bet I know of where we are with the with the um, overlay. Just because of the subject matter. Right, and so there was a, a public input session uh, a week ago. Mm -hmm. Right, it was, um, and so so the next step for the overlay district is the local planning agency to special meeting on November seventeenth. Next, um, that's. Two weeks from now. Right, two weeks from now, and that will be an advertised meeting, obviously, it's the, the LPA. After that, it would go to the City Commission for first reading on December 2nd and second reading on December 16th. Wow. Some of the things I want to keep the, the Commission to, um, to keep in mind, the schedule as uh, it's established right now is consistent uh, with the consultant scope that, that um, we conveyed to all of you that has been executed and the timetables uh, that correspond with the zoning in progress. The zoning in progress terminates in, uh, Jan on January 1st of 2022. And so we were charged by the city commission to complete the overlay district by January 1st of 2022. One of the things I want the commission to note is that the Sterling Hotel, which is the Ocean, Ocean Optics site, is currently scheduled uh, to, for first and second reading at the same time as the overlay. On, uh, so that's December 2nd and December 16th of 2021. If, and I already gave Nikki a heads up this afternoon. Um, if the city That's commission. That's a problem. Merry mm -hmm. Christmas. That is a yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. So oh. if the city commission. Um, That's a real problem. The city commission may wish to extend the zoning in progress, and Nikki can speak to that if you want additional time to process the overlay. 
the if there is additional is there is a request for additional input from the community on the zoning overlay we're going to have to adjust the scope from Kimley Horn so so you know there are some factors at play here um, as far as the zoning overlay I mean excuse me the overlay district but the 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 point is this is the timetable and the time frame that we established right. when you adopted the zoning in progress and the Kimley Horn scope and the I mean the timetable is the timetable I mean that's the whole point about the zoning and the way I the way I kind of understood it is that the zoning in progress is a temporary time limited Raise them break Raise them. right mm -hmm. that it doesn't put too much burden on any one person the more we extend it the more burden it becomes and doesn't really how, having said that, as the general gist, I do not think we should have ocean optics in this on the same night. I really don't, because I think it's going to be, I think we want to allow for enough, enough time for everybody to speak. We're going to have a lot of questions. We're, it, it, it's a big decision. And, and, yeah. and there, then there's going to be other things on the agendas. We've gone down this road before, and it's been a big mistake. Yeah. So, and then I, uh, Having said that, I also know, Jennifer, you're already getting beat up with Ocean Optics people because it's a month later than they wanted it to be. Right. right. So They're on I'm, a critical path. You yeah, so I don't know exactly what the solution is, and I don't necessarily want to say what it is, but well, even if we have to have a special meeting, you know, or something. The only thing I, would, I am most uh, concerned with is I just want to be really open I mean it was such 110 people showed up I mean it was so well attended George you all did a great job I don't want to lose that uh, you know that that interest I don't want to lose it so if if we're supposed to go to the you know the LPA I mean how do they know that they can come to the LPA I'm I would almost wish that we could have one more because there were some unanswered questions I would almost wish that we could have one more library night or something mm -hmm. and answer some of those questions I, I'm not trying to impede I totally understand that the zoning in progress has to be for a reasonable time under the law totally get that um, I just don't want to lose the interest in, in this subject because they're, they're going to say, oh, really, November 17th, LPA, uh, December 2nd, December 16th. I, I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there were unanswered questions. It's complex, uh, not to impede the zoning in progress, but, you know, I, I sort of hate to capsulize this in because it's a big subject and people are interested so the questions that you or that you heard there that maybe didn't get answered I'm, a, I'm I'm only assuming because of just past history you you would probably do some kind of exhibit for us that kind of outlined the questions that you heard with the answers in the staffing right and yeah, talk about that of course mayor yeah so Kimley Horn uh, they did an awesome job right. at that presentation mm -hmm. uh, we've got a full listing of everybody that attended so we will be able to reach out um, you know with with dates once we know what they are it's tentative for November 17th right now until we have this discussion to see if you want to um, move some things but um, yeah we'll, we will we will prepare uh, to the best of our ability um, what we heard that night I, I got to be honest after the meeting I heard a lot of things that were kind of off topic so we were oh, getting no, a lot no, I, I hear that we were getting a lot of things but there, there were some pretty specific questions as to zoning right and right. Kimley Horn said hey wait a minute you know uh, time out folks because this is this is our direction at this point so I mean there's things that are very complex that we're going to have to talk about more or yeah. you're Yep. You, that so. daylight plane, as an example, is a very technical and complicated aspect Can of I it. Can I ask a question real quick? Um, you know what I feel like might be missing? And I, again, I don't want to make this longer because I'm trying to keep in within what we decided. But usually when we have something this complicated, 
we have a workshop on it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was sitting over and here And that thinking. would be a great Where we, yeah. we can get a sense of what's likely to be recommended, mm -hmm. what we get to hash it out a little bit, we get to think about it bef before it goes through the formal process. And every time we don't do that, yeah, it's the public meetings go, it's like it, they do not go well. Remember some of the code enforcement things, you know? Well, we could shift at the last minute after we do all the LPA and advertising. I mean, because, I mean, I wasn't at the community meeting. I, I couldn't either. attend. I had I a conflict. And so yeah. I don't know what they're even saying. Well, no, so. but Jeff was there and John right. was there. Right, but it's not recorded, so I there's no way for that, me to relive that's that correct experience. Too. Right. So I totally agree. Let's a workshop, whatever, but give people another chance to, to figure things. out a real way sequence that this is going to go and that's wonderful that you have people that you can reach out to but um but it'll push back the date it will i have an idea sure. on, on that better yeah. to do it right though and i know commissioner Tonga wanted to say something yeah I, I did i did I, I definitely did and I've, I've communicated a little bit to the city manager about this um I think there were a lot of un a lot of unanswered questions, and there was some confusion, uh, and that's all fine, um, and I mean that um, because it was just done in one one short night, and it's so fine. We had 110 or whatever the number was that were there, but what about the people that weren't there and would have liked to have been there? And so I'm really in agreement that that we ought to do something more. Um, I don't know what the answer is, and I think I'm going to hear it. Um, but I, I like where we started going with this a little bit, that we ought to do something more that we can then have people take a look at it so they would at least have some understanding of it. I, I heard a lot of misunderstanding. Not a lot, I'm sorry. I heard some misunderstanding of what some people had thought they had heard uh, and the like, and, and they didn't get a chance really to talk as well. So I'm, I'm really anxious to hear what you have to say. So um, I agree. We, we need... We need to do another step here someplace, somehow. Well, just for us, you know? Yeah, for us and for everybody. Well, for and, everybody. But if, if we did the workshop, everybody. Mm -hmm. that we're not making a decision, we're just giving consensus and guiding, whatever, people could come to that. And we would want them to And come we, to that. you know, they right. could be there at that and they can question too because there's no vote being taken and we can, and can whatever they can go back and look at it if right they're not here if they can't be here yeah that, that was good right. the diagram so. stuff so I think that one of the things I'd like to do is meet uh, with the city attorney and to meet with community development staff to talk about the zoning in progress and extending that and what we would do mayor to address your your um, concern regarding you know a burden is we do know the projects that were in the hopper when we put the zoning in progress in place um, there wasn't as you know a lot of pushback uh, from the development community when we establish the zoning in progress. So we would circle back to those that we know of um, to work with them about, you know, what the zoning, what the overlay is and to look at their development plans as well to kind of start giving them some guidance, you know, maybe even work with Kimley Horn mm -hmm. to give them some guidance so that we're being fair to them. Um, I, I certainly, with a, with a project this big and this impactful, uh, don't want to right? rush it. You know, we were we were given a mandate by the city commission, and I just want for the record that that we we're going to accomplish that mandate absent other direction from the commission. So what I'm hearing is a consensus to extend the zoning in progress, which Nikki is prepared to bring on the on the 30th of November. We'll work with Kimley Horn. We need to revise their scope uh, and hold perhaps one more public meeting. Get them here to a workshop as well. That's two more meetings for them. Um, and then, um, uh, uh, you know, and then develop the overlay and bring it to you, in a, in a manner that you're more comfortable with. Informational. Yeah, informational. You do question and answer, and then take it through the right. voting process. And and just for the record, though, I, and I want to say this very clearly and very transparently, staff was concerned about the timing of this, but but I pushed hard to get it done within these time frames because that was our mandate from the city commission. So I'm not bothered at all by the commission giving us direction to move it back a little bit. I know Neither George is not. <laughs> George is going to have him beer later. Yeah. <laughs> he is. All right, so, I just, 
Mm -hmm. I told I'll, you my only concern, just making sure that we're not being burdensome. And That's what I'll make a quick comment on, Mayor, because I'm glad that you brought that up. And as you may recall, when you were first considering your zoning in progress resolution, at that time, you rightfully used the city's professional staff's recommendation as well as your consultant's recommendation about the length of time that it would take to study, investigate, and develop these potential regulations. That's like anything. It's a mm -hmm. prediction. It's an estimate at that time. So the fact that some circumstances have changed slightly is something that the commission can consider. Oftentimes, moratoriums, even, even moratoriums, the more stringent that we talked about when we were considering whether to do a zoning in progress or a moratorium can be extended if, you know, you realize that, oh, our first period of time didn't end up being quite enough. But so what I would look to um, the city's professional staff and its consultant is for another recommendation to come to the city commission about how much more time they think is reasonable to um, extend the zoning in progress to accomplish these additional initiatives, to accomplish these additional meetings. And um, that would come before you then in a form of another resolution that extends the zoning in progress based on that reasonable estimate of, of additional time based on where we are today. And that's that's considered to be um, all within the confines and the legal parameters of the zoning in progress that you established. So there isn't a legal date that we have to no longer than X, Y, and Z. There's not like a, there's not a bright line rule. It's a reasonableness standard. So of course, you know, at some time, if you're sitting here and you're six years into a zoning in progress, then you're probably <laughs> gonna have. <laughs> But you don't feel like we've crossed the line? No, crazy. no, Mayor. I don't have a concern about going from eight months to what sounds like it's going to be maybe a few more months, but not, you know, I, I, I don't have a concern. In fact, sometimes what you'll see is a moratorium or a zoning in progress that's established for six months, and then they extend it for another six months. Right. And that's been upheld to be reasonable. So I don't have a concern with the amount of time that's being discussed um, by the staff this evening. I think I have to make a comment just so everybody sure. knows this, and I, and I don't want to go too fast, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I did, I was approached at least twice, maybe three times, I, I'm trying to figure, remember this now, and listened to people that were pretty upset about the fact that it was still going on, and when was it going to end, and, and the like, and, but both, I, two of them were definitely doing something, and the other one other one wanted to do something and was waiting I've and that's that only too. three it's only I, I, three I, i've heard one or two as well so, not a lot but i have had a few <clears throat> so and that's a great segue into the fact that the commission remembers when they passed the zoning in progress you did offer some standards so people could continue to do like modest additions right. swimming pool right. that's happening so it's not like Nothing we're not doing happening. anything else. right can we get that word out by the way yeah mm -hmm. We should get that. We should get that. It, can we? And, and, we, and it's, uh, we have a, our website's dedicated to it. So it, it actually has all those conditions laid out for, okay. for everybody to see. But I mean, maybe we can get that out to the general. To we'll the general. Send it yeah, out. we can yeah, talk to so. Social media outlets. Yes. Absolutely. I think that'd be helpful. Yeah. Okay, I think we have a question. I was just yeah. like, yeah, you're allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have consensus directions. Thank you, Mayor. I think you do. <laughs> that does give me enough. Okay, to work and then on. at least those two things. And let's try agendas with if Ocean Optics is on the first and second meeting of December. Mm -hmm. Number one item under action. It will be long. We need to use the cards. Okay, and we need to make sure that people know that out in the audience, you know, you might need a couple extra hands mm -hmm. um, And let's try not to uh, Put a whole bunch of other things on the agenda so Sir, that's going to the LPA, right? I mean it tenth for the or did it the 10th tenth. Tenth. Tenth, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. next Wednesday When when is the J's when, oh. when's the J? We're still working on the development agreement. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we don't have a. Yeah, they're not in design review yet. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it would be good to just everybody keep an eye on those agendas. Right. I, I want it to be as comfortable of an uncomfortable environment that it is. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? No, it's important. And and we can we know how to do a good job at that. <laughs> Make it nice and cold in here. Yeah. Not a lot of not a lot of presentations. Cold is unless they're absolutely necessary or pile them on on the Tuesday meeting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mayor, I have one more thing very yep. quickly. I'm sorry. Uh, 
I'll, t I'll talk as quickly as, as Nikki does. So <laughs> <laughs> this is from the Florida League of Cities, uh, Senate Bill uh, 224 passed the Senate uh, Community Affairs Committee. This is a bill um, you, that would give cities, uh, thanks George, uh, and counties the ability to provide smoke-free zones in a public park or on public uh, beaches. This is a home rule issue. Currently, the law prohibits local governments from setting up reasonable smoke-free zones. So if, with your permission, we'd like to send a letter to the next stop, which is the Senate Environmental and uh, Natural Resources Committee in support of the bill, which will give us our home rule right back to, to regulate our own parks as far as a smoke-free facility. We have it smoke-free all outside of City Hall as well. <laughs> no, I'd get in trouble for that. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> May I send a letter, please? Yes. Thank you. Everybody yes, okay I with agree. that? Yeah. <laughs> she didn't even. No sense of humor on that she one, isn't, isn't, okay. I, I'm looking to see what time our place closes. No. Oh. Yeah. No, yeah. And, uh, you there know. is cake back there, too. Oh, yeah, there's cake, too. Yeah, and I'm not eating any cake. You know, I... Two uh, times this week. I mean, um, cake. It's actually three. Three, because Kevin... For Kevin. Kevin. I didn't get a Okay, Kevin's so anything else for the good of the order? Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Wait, cake. Oh, yeah. Three cakes. No, ma'am. Everything's closed. Oh, we're eating well. cake, then. We're eating cake. Well, Let them eat I know cake. where I know where co I know where it's not closed. It's just not in walking distance. Mm. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, you're the birthday girl. So. <laughs> no. Do, are we getting? Uh, I don't know. I didn't check that yet. All right. Let's. Adjourn. Wait. Oh, adjourn. adjourn. Me? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Thank sorry. you for watching this City of Dunedin government meeting. If you'd like to review any part of this meeting or watch any previous government meeting coverage, you can watch these meetings online anytime through the city's website, DunedinGov.com. Stay connected with everything Dunedin. Follow the city on this channel and on the city's Facebook page, through Twitter, and on the city's YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching this Dunedin Television production.